I think Breaking Bad epitomizes everything that I guess does not interest me. I prefer the later seasons of Game of Thrones. Fuck off, God no. gen Genuinely. Welcome back to this episode of Trash Taste. I'm Connor with the boys, Garton J. And ah, yes. today we have a special episode. Yes. What is Only it? fit to be viewed on the TV. Hope you are Chromecasting this or you have a built-in Chromecast in your TV. But the Apple, point is, Apple is TV. That, the point is it's gonna be on your TV because we're, this is the TV episode. We talk about some of our favorite TV shows of all time yes. and roast each other's tastes. We're gonna be picking nine shows each and then we're both gonna be rating the other person's Bring taste. Bring back that yeah. three by three, baby. Oh, it's we're been, running it's been out of ideas. It's no, been, no. it's been, well, <laughs> we're running no, out no, of ideas. No, no, really, because I've missed the three by three format. You know, I've, I've missed it because we, it's been actually like a long time since we did our last three by three. What was the last three by three we did? Oh. I, I think it was like music, be, right? Music. Oh, it was, oh, was the music. music. That yeah. feels like a fucking eternity. Ago. Yeah, I know, was. right? It wasn't. Yeah. It? I <laughs> like crap. what's better than just talking about shit that you like, you know? <laughs> and uh, just not arguing every like five seconds about. Thoughts. I mean, we are going to be arguing you regardless. Said you had a lot of difficulty picking your list. Yeah. Yeah, because I it wasn't until I was making by three by three I realized I didn't really grow up watching a whole lot of like variety of TV. Yeah. Um. So I really I had to actually text my sister to be like, "What the fuck did we watch growing up?" Because yeah. I legitimately don't remember. So half Can't of these be that good TV yeah. if you don't fucking remember it. Well, no, I remembered it, and she reminded me because we were both like, "Uh, what the fuck was it?" What is my favorite TV show of all time? I couldn't tell you. I can't remember it. No, yeah. no. <laughs> well, so, I, well, actually, it's it's. I, I had a similar problem to Joey in that I haven't, I don't think I've actually seen that many TV shows, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Or like seen it down to like the end or have like an emotional attachment to yeah. a TV show. Like there's lots of yeah. that I've seen, but like they haven't really stuck with me or they I don't really feel that strongly about them. Yeah, cause let, let me tell you the difference between like a TV show and an anime. Mm. Anime, 24 episodes, one season. Mm. You can binge that in a night if yeah. you wanted mm. to. Mm. Uh, you start a TV series and it's like, hey, here's nine seasons of 24 <laughs> episodes. Of, that's an hour long. True. And true. that's like, that's like a, you know, a fairly middle length TV yeah, show. You know? Yeah. If you talk about some of the most famous TV shows like Breaking Bad or something. That's mm. five seasons. That's yep. so short mm. in terms of like- I mean, for American for, stuff. For American yeah, for the TV American shows, stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the rule uh, is that we decided to not include any anime because we've already done an anime obviously. three by three. <laughs> um, we can do, it was like a, a mix of, basically it was like any TV show, right? So it's yeah. like a mix between like Western cartoons, mm -hmm. like uh, narrative driven, like mm -hmm. TV shows, like just TV programming we used to watch. Literally guess, anything that, every that week. is a series and yeah. has yeah. episodes. Yeah, yeah. And ba basically yeah. anything that's not anime. Because anything I, that's not anime and a movie. I can name <laughs> off more anime that I've watched than whole, than than the entire broad spectrum of TV shows in every country. I, I feel like my list or Gant's list uh, could easily have been my list. I'm pretty sure I know what Gant's gonna put on his yeah, and really? I, I could have put them on mine, but I was like, Gant's gonna put them on his. So I'll yeah. let Gant talk about it. <laughs> Mine's gonna be some weird shit. I hope so. I hope <laughs> when, so. when isn't it, Joey? When isn't it, Joey? Mine's gonna be Joey's some like, weird out the, shit. This is the math rock, by the way. And I'm like, the fuck is that? <laughs> Joey, oh, the like, Midwest emo. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't believe it's real. I don't believe it's real. Yeah. It's not real, it can't yeah. hurt me. This, I definitely felt more like a casual coming into this with, like mm. than a lot of other I watched the most TV out of the three of us. That feels Probably. sad. Probably. That feels sad to say. Yeah, because like I discovered why? anime really oh. early. I discovered anime really early in life. So I'm like, why would I need to watch TV when I have mm. anime, guys? Come on. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, sometimes anime is great, but sometimes you need, you need like a bit of Jack Bauer 24 in your life to like spice things up. Yeah, like, I mean like, I I, know, I, yeah, I, I get that as well. And I is like- Is that one of them? <laughs> that's not one of them, but <laughs> that could be on my list. Yeah. Really? I love 24. I don't think I've yeah. seen a single episode of 24. 24 was like the thing I watched when I was 15. I'm like, this is so fucking cool. I yeah. know a, enough about 24 through osmosis, okay. but I've okay. never yeah. sat down See, and watched any episode of 24. Osmosis is the, uh, is the uh, movement of uh, water particles, by the way. Yes, not thank, not thank knowledge, you. just want to you. specify that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but it's the bad, wow. uh, do you mean diffusion? Did you just, did you just yeah. um actually yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, actually, uh. yeah, I mean like there's a lot of TV shows that I've watched. Like I've, I've actually seen 24, but I've, I've only like, TV. I've only seen one season of 24. I've seen like, three, four seasons of Lost. I've oh. seen two seasons of House. Mm. But like, it, it takes up so much time. Right? I've watched a lot of TV, but I've it's never- It's a commitment. Yeah, I've never, I've, I've I, rarely- I've got a lot done in my student days. Yeah, I've <laughs> rarely <laughs> finished TV shows right up until the end, just cause there's so much mm. of it. So Fair enough. yeah, that's why I had a hard time choosing. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, should we leave it to- Trash, Trash box can to decide. His face yeah. is like almost gone. Yeah, yeah it is almost we gone. We should probably redraw. He's like yeah. a battered war veteran. <laughs> he is man. a battered war veteran. Yeah. All right, who's going first? 
I don't know who's going to go first. Oh, it's, oh, you. it's oh, you. It is you, Connor. Works. I guess that works. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Kai, All bring right. up Connor's 3x3. Three three. All right. Uh, for those of you, in case this is your first time you're watching a Trash Taste 3x3 three three video, we should do a quick explanation of what a 3x3 three three is. Basically, it's, as the name suggests, it's a box, three squares by three squares, nine mm -hmm. in total. And it's basically nine whatever the, the topic is, in this mm -hmm. case, TV series, that you feel strongly about or you grew up with or you really enjoy, you really yeah. like, yeah. you want to share. So these a lot of these are some of my favorites, but maybe some of this is a good story behind it or yeah. What, yeah. It's, what it's helped me. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you'll get a good idea of what that person's personality is like yeah. based on their three by three. Yeah, that's mine. That's mine. Okay. I pull it up. All right, okay, pull it up. Mind. Where, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh. Here we go. Creeping in. Creeping oh. in. There oh. Go. Okay, there I, go. okay. So I know for starters, right? Gans probably put Peep Show on his, but I had yes. to do it. I had to do it to him. Yeah. Is Peep Show. That I'm. I'm glad. No. Okay. No. I'm glad. No. No. <laughs> Wait. What the fuck? I only know this one from the meme. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad that you uh, put Arcane on it. Yeah. I had to put Arcane on. Yeah. Because I needed to. I was like, I was like, Connor's gonna put Arcane on his one. That's an anime though. No, it's not. <laughs> Arcane, like you, we argued before, it wasn't an anime. Before, I argued it wasn't anime, but no one believed me. Before starting, can I just say, this is the worst cropping I've ever seen. You literally yeah, I, I did not care to- Hanmo. This correctly. <laughs> Hanmo, Kane. Is, is there any way we can full screen? Or God, like, I, I, put I- the I, shit on the top and the bottom? Dude, I can't uh, even see the title of Mad Men because it's yeah, they, fucking yeah. covered yeah. by they the- put they, they put this big ass fucking over watermelon on yeah. it. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, All right, I, whatever. I, I, I was like, when- no, looking for mine. I, li I liked, I tried to look for like square images yeah, of them. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, because I, I just gave up. I've never seen of Kane or Well, I'll Saul explain what they're on when we get to Or in it, hunting. Right? So let's go, we, which or way are we going to go? Gonna, how, how do you guys want to do it? Uh, just go through them all. I mean, okay, so- no, I'll Actually, before we get into it, I'll just tell you what each show is and then we'll talk about it. We'll yeah. Please. Number one, Banger, Hannah Montana. Number two in the, the middle top, yeah. big yeah. show. Top right, Arcane. Middle left, Better Call Saul. Middle, Taskmaster. Uh, middle right, Futurama. Bottom left, Come Dine With Me. Woo! M bottom middle, oh, Mind Hunter. With... Yeah. Bottom right is Mad Men. Okay. Yes. I was I was wondering what the, see, because I've seen this image right, yeah. let's, through let's, memes. Let's, let's, let's start with let's Come Dine With, so come what dine with yeah. Me. So you said come really loudly. There. Yeah, no, come. That triggered a response in me. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't put it on your list, Gon. Yes, you? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, you, there's a yes, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. There, okay, I'm. There are yes, a, no. <laughs> there are a few things here that I very much considered putting on. Uh, Arcane, I was very obviously. close to putting Futurama. Futurama, yeah. very, very close. Come dine with me as well. I think is pretty much the only. Like, I, I I made my list and I was like, yeah, yeah, you can tell I'm white without. Looking at me. <laughs> I was like, I, I felt like I made it, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's fine. I am <laughs> right. So I, I too enjoy television. Right. Yeah. So let me explain. Come down with me to those who don't know. It's a British TV show, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I swear this thing is shot on like a budget of like a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's they they air like one every day. I yeah. don't like understand really? how this works. It's like they air so many of these goddamn episodes. How many episodes have come down with me in the UK is that? So the, the whole concept behind this TV show is you get four strangers yeah. who all are very proud of their cooking and their house. And the idea is, is that once in this, in this nice, uh, is it an hour or 30 minutes? Uh, I think it's about 30 minutes. 30 minutes, they all go, do you get a one per? Okay, this is fucking- <laughs> Let me explain, let me explain. <laughs> no, I had, a great really remember I had a great explanation, but then I forgot, do they go to everyone's house in one episode or they go <laughs> to one person's house one episode? No, it's everyone's house every okay. episode. Okay, so Who's everyone? I'm explaining. So it's okay. four people competing against each Sometimes other. Sometimes five. Sometimes five. Okay. But most of the time it's four people. And these four people go into, take it in turns to host a dinner party. Oh, yeah, that's, better and, than, oh, yeah, that's better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and within, uh, within this dinner party, they have to impress the guests as much as possible, not just with the food, but mm. with the experience of their home dining experience. Right, right. right? Uh, so sometimes they, put as much effort into like personalize their home dining experience as possible. Mm. And at the end of the day, um, each contestant rates how good their experience was. And how good the night was. The and food, how good the night the was. Right. Atmosphere. Yeah. Right. But obviously, right, like you're, as everyone's voting for each other, it's kind of a trust system of, are you not gonna be a dick and yeah. just give everyone else a one because you want to mm, win? Yeah. And so it kind of has a lot of really fun elements to it. A lot of snide moments, but also the best part of the show is the cringe. It's so good because you get a bunch of just generic office workers, just normal people. Yeah. 
you tell them throw a dinner party for random strangers right. on camera. And it's just, it's fantastic. <laughs> and then they also decided, and this is probably the best part of the show. Mm. Yeah. They decided that they were gonna make the narrator just a guy who just takes the piss out of everything they do. <laughs> Classic British Just shoulder. completely sarcastic, right. 24-7. Yeah. And it just keeps the show going and it keeps mm. you uh, keeps you inv invested. This to me, come down to me, this to me is peak British reality oh, yeah, TV. Yeah. Right. Because like, I, I imagine like a come down with me in America. God, every time I say come now, I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> come like, down come. with me. Oh my God. Like every, if I imagine like, can you imagine an American no, come down no, with me? No. It'll be like, it, it would be like the most over the top Chaos. dining experience. Kish wasn't yeah. done. Boom, boom. Yo, 10, <laughs> ten fucking vine booms in one shot. Like boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry, <laughs> Kerry overcooked the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. There's like, yeah. there's very minimal editing. It's yeah. really dry. It's really yeah. stale. It's like the the thing that shines about this is just British sarcasm and sass yeah, because yeah. they never say that they have a bad experience oh, with yeah. the meal, yeah. but that's what makes it good, right? right, right. How do you how would you not insult the <laughs> uh, the host of this dinner party yeah. while we'll, while still insulting the host of this dinner party? Right. It's fucking fantastic. And like most of the time, it's like four very average or below average cooks yeah. just giving yeah. each other shit right. for, for not. Cooking I feel as like good I've definitely seen clips. <laughs> yeah, of it's, the show. it's yeah. really good. And oh my, these things where they like while the person's cooking. I'm pretty sure the producer's like, hey, go and snoop around their house and look at things mm, and yeah. comment. And they just like raid each other's houses. It's so bizarre, <laughs> but it's really fun. And I do, oh my God, it's just the the amount of bickering and, and just bitchiness involved is right, just fantastic. Yeah. And it's just so like surface level. Yeah. Like a they don't ever say it. Mm. They'll be like, well, Timothy's quiche was rather cold. So I, I'm gonna have to dock five points for that. And it's <laughs> like, what? What do you mean? Like you're making shit up. Like you just yeah. made it up. Or like someone will be like, the food was all amazing. And one person will be like, actually, I, I hated it. It was not yeah. my standard. It's like, you're right. It, it, was, yeah. it sucked. <laughs> I, I, th I think there's one clip where someone actually did properly go off. Like there was actually mm, drama. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of my favorite like television clips of all time. She's like, like, cause a guy was like really, really salty that someone else had won. Right? <laughs> and by the way- Oh, I've, I know this. He stands yeah. up, right? And he He's stands like, up. What? But yeah, by the way, the winner, they only get like a hundred quid or something. It's like, right? it's, it's, it's <laughs> like nothing, right? Covers the right, food. right? It, it doesn't even cover the cost to cook the fucking food. People wow. are playing for pride. And yeah. I remember this, there's this one clip where this one guy gets so fucking salty that someone else wins. And it's like one of my favorite moments in TV because yeah. he because he just starts like it's the most British insults that he just starts throwing out and he just goes well feel free to get the fuck out of my house you reverse out of this like a you reverse. <laughs> You reverse, you know, you walk with the grace of a dump truck or something like that. <laughs> it's it was so good. Can we, can we play the clip, Moodan? Play the clip with you. You won, Jane. Enjoy the money, but I hope now you spend it on getting some lessons in grace and decorum because you have all the grace of a reversing dump truck without any tires on. Oh my God. It's, 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 it's just fantastic. And yeah. it's just like, if to me, it's what reality TV should be. Right. Yeah. It's like none of this like, ruin someone's life or mm. just make them fucking miserable or just sell sex, sex, sex. Yeah. It's like, let's just get people to cook for each other and just let them do like, just give them the tools to have their own destruction. Like yeah. right. just saying, hey, rate their food. Right. And just see what happens. And, and it's fantastic. I think yes. there's like a bazillion episodes. Yeah, there is. 1,051 episodes over 20. 1051 episodes. 1051 episodes. Yeah, basically, you know you know that TV show that just always seems to be it's on TV? It's always yeah. on, this, every day. This right. is always on in one channel or another. If it's not wow. on like channel four, then it's on one of like the reruns of like one of the other channels. Mm. It doesn't matter. I'm surprised it even has seasons. Like, it's it, really good. Yeah. It's very, and this is, the, this is where that iconic uh, meme comes from where the guy puts the, the, uh, the colander yeah, in his no. mouth. Uh, the whisk, oh, yeah. The whisk, sorry, yeah. colander. Yeah. Be impressed with a colander. I love well. that, Amy. Uh, yeah, put the whisk in there. <laughs> it's so gross. It's yeah. so like revolting. But it's like, it sums up like home cooking. I just do it my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know. Um, okay, so I obviously I know Futurama, yep. uh, Hannah Montana, obviously. Yeah. Peep show you guys talk about. I feel like you've told me about Peep oh, we'll, show. We'll stick on the British shows then for now. Let's just go right to Let's the Let's go other. to Taskmaster. Okay, oh, so. Sorry. Peep show, do peep show then test myself. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So peep show. Yeah. Uh, I will explain it poorly. You've then explained Gaunt it to me before, I remember. Yeah. Better. Yeah. All right. um, so imagine two British people whose life is just not going the way they wanted. Right. And instead of like actually doing anything about it, they just 
take it out on each other and just cause the most cringe situations for everyone around them and themselves. So this isn't like, this is like narrative, right? Like this is fiction or? It's fiction and it's- <laughs> But it's not like reality TV, right? It is, it is one of the most intentionally cringe shows in mm -hmm. existence. Right. Yeah. And if you love cringe humor, this is this is the king of it. Right. Yeah, There's right. no show that even comes close to this. I mean, I think the first episode opens up uh, with Jeremy, who is w one of the two main characters with Jeremy and Mark. Mm. Uh, Mark is played by David Mitchell, who is a fantastic kind of, he's really great at playing these weaselly characters. Yeah. Like right, these kind right, of right. like weasel looking characters that are very like, and he plays that amazingly. Yeah. He plays this kind of timid, uh, but very like self-righteous like, guy who thinks like, he's uh, way smarter than he is. Kind of like Michael Cera like type or? Michael Cera, if, <laughs> would, what, what, would, what would have to go wrong in Michael Cera life to be, to be Mark <laughs> Is that sure. bad? Oh. It's like, it's like an ima imagine a actually somewhat intelligent 40 year old man yeah. who just made all the wrong life decisions right. and is angry at the world for it. Right. And so he kind of thinks that he's owed more than he gets. Mm. And so he just takes it out on everyone else in a <laughs> yeah. very British way. Right. Yeah. And he just takes it out on Jeremy, but Jeremy is also just a giant buffoon. Yeah. Right. He's an idiot. Right. And the first episode opens up, I believe with um, Jeremy meets this girl who's wearing like a beanie mm. and he's like, oh, she's so cute. I want to have sex with her. And then I think they get together, finds out she has cancer and then doesn't want to be with her anymore and tries to kind of break it off in a really weird way. Oh, and it's just so cringe where yeah. he's trying to like, he said, like, cause he doesn't fully understand, like he knows what cancer is because he's never met anyone with it. He's just really fucking awful. Yeah. At, at being able to even remotely understand how to talk to someone with cancer. Jesus. Yeah. So he's just like, He's like, when did this come out? It's like 2000, like fucking. Okay, 2000. I was gonna say this is very 2000s humor. Yeah, but yeah. no, no, this is like this. This, this could easily air today. This is, okay. this is, this it, is it did not age poorly at all. This, this right. is age like perfectly because okay. I, I still watch it to this day. Like, right, right, right. Me and Sydney still binge all of the seasons. Unfortunately, one of the bad things about British televisions, unlike American you TV binge seasons, it like a day. yeah, yeah. Every like there's like seven seasons of Peep Show, but like mm. every season has six episodes. That's, yeah. and, that, oh. and that's six half an hour episodes as well. But like, so. this is what I really love about some British TV shows. It really feels like it earns the six episodes, yeah. 30 minutes each, where it's mm. like, there is not a single beat missed in this show. Yeah. Right. Like there is no episode that sucks. Mm. Yeah. There's no episode that isn't funny. Mm. And yeah. there's no episode where there isn't like five moments that isn't gonna make you laugh out loud. Yeah. Right, right. Just like, I'd, sometimes it's just every, almost every episode I think in Peep Show is an absolute banger. It's mm. so And there are, there are some lines that are just like stuck with me <laughs> for like my entire life. <laughs> there's, okay, there's a, there's a completely unrelated plot line. I feel like this sums it up so well. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an episode where Jeremy is one of the characters uh, works in a gym and Mark is going to this gym and doesn't really want to go to it, but is kind of being forced to. And Jeremy for some, why does Jeremy want to not go to the gym anymore? He does, why does he not want to work there? I can't remember why. Um, <laughs> because I remember, why, I, I, I remember what he does. I can't right. remember. Oh. I, th I think he joined it to get with a girl or something like that. Yeah, so he joins the gym to get with this attractive uh, other worker there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, Mark doesn't want to go to the gym anymore. Right. So he makes up this elaborate excuse that one of the masseuses touched him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's this whole awkward ordeal where he has to go to the office to the manager yeah. and awkwardly explain that he was touched while the guy is there, the masseuse. Right. Yeah. It's just this stumbling, horrible, cringe inducing thing oh. where he's like, and, and, and he, and he touched me. And the guy's like, what the fuck? I didn't touch you. And then to get fired, because Jeremy doesn't want to work there anymore, he like shits in the pool and then tries to blame somebody else. It's this whole like, it's just, it goes from zero to a hundred every single episode where right. everything just accumulates and, and builds and it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's cringe humor at its best. It's British humor at its best. Um, if you want to feel like you're British for some reason, well, I don't know why yeah. you would, watch this TV show, tell to it, tell her a British person you've watched this show, yeah. they will love you. Exactly. Mm. I mean, Sydney fucking loves this show. That's, mm. you know, and that's how I knew that she could understand British humor. If you can right. get Peep Show, cause I show Peep Show to my mom and dad. They're like, why, why is this It's funny? too much for my parents as well. Yeah. It's mm. too much cringe. It's yeah. a lot. Mm. Yeah. There is not a single episode where you won't be uncomfortable. Yeah. The way, the best way I can describe <laughs> it is like, just imagine two fucking assholes mm. trying not to be assholes. But in the end of the day, they're just, they're just trying to get on with life. Mm. But they somehow find themselves in the worst fucking situations. So right. So I want to rewatch it now. It's oh, so on. good. It's so, and like, it's not just even these two characters. There's so many like 
if you've lived in England, you've like recognized who these people are. Uh-huh. Cause there's like some, you know, you know, some of these, sometimes you have a show that you, it's a bit, hits a bit too close to home sometimes. Yeah, because yeah. there are some characters that you kind of recognize as a person that you've met in your life before in the UK. Yeah. Um, like one of one character that stands out to me is like super hands. Oh my God. I think, I think super hands who's yeah. just that guy who just brings drugs to everything, right? <laughs> Yeah. And, and he's okay. just like, he's just lost control of his life. Right, right. <laughs> Why is he called Superhead? Because uh, it just I, sounds- well, No one knows. No right. one knows. But the, this guy's just insane. And yeah. like, there's, you know, it's also shot really interestingly. Yeah. It's all POV. Yeah. Oh. I think that's why it's called Peep Show. Yeah, right? yeah. Because yeah. and, and they shoot the scenes multiple times, but like, so the camera keeps swapping between the POVs oh. in the scenes. So it's yeah. never a- uh, an angle of like, okay, his over the shoulder. It's like, right. it's always POV, oh, yeah. that's interesting. which makes for some really good moments because a lot of the times really awkward moments hit so hard because yeah. the person who sees you that the awkward thing happened looks directly at the camera oh, yeah. and I is see. looking at it like you did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really good. It's oh, so that's good. really and, interesting. And it's, yeah. and it's just amazing. Like, oh. and it's, it's, I know the TV show is kind of shot like this to my knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. POV yeah. and it just works. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, watch Peep Show. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. I know you guys of, like rave on about it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. definitely want to yeah, get like, it. And the, yeah. the POV thing also makes it feel very uncomfortable because yeah. you're mm. often in the face. Yeah. Right, the characters right. a lot, and it, it makes feels you, like you're there. You yeah. kind of feel like, okay, I, this is yeah. oh, this is a lot. <laughs> gamers, gamers, let me tell you about gamer subs. I will literally die if I don't drink gamer subs. <laughs> Sugar isn't good for you, but Gamer Subs is. Gamers, <laughs> if you need a clean energy drink with no crashes, no sugar, and tastes amazing, you should be drinking some Gamer Subs. Gamers, if you don't need energy, but you just want to replace all that sugary crap, we have the caffeine free version as Ooh. well. Did you know that Gamer Subs also doesn't miss with flavors such as the classics known as, and I'm reading this correctly, titty milk? or guacamole gamer fart. And did you know that even though it's not available anymore, you can drink out of our trash taste waifu cups as well. Isn't that right, guys? Joey, get that trash out of here because my real waifu has just released her own cup. It goes on sale on November 28th. So guys, come on, please support my wife, guys. Come on, she needs it. She needs it, but guys. But you better use coupon code trash taste when doing that, okay? Or I will die. <laughs> <laughs> so get yourself this new and awesome gamer waifu cup at gamersubs.gg slash trash taste and use our coupon code trash taste at checkout. Get it or I will come to your house and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, back to the episode. Yeah, and then obviously Taskmaster, yeah. which uh, I think is, it, it's okay. So Taskmaster, let me explain it before I get into it. But I think the show is, is is blowing up and it's gonna blow up a shit ton in the US as well more. Mm. I, I know a lot of people are recently coming up to me from the US like, have you heard of this thing called Taskmaster? I'm like, mm. yeah, yes, it's very old in the UK. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, it's, I don't even know how you explain this. Uh, you get a bunch of comedians together. Yeah, I, I actually wanted to do a Taskmaster for After Dark. Maybe yeah, we day. definitely what? wanna do this at some point. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. format mm. is just gold. Yeah. It's right. so, okay. such so, good. So basically, such good. It's kind of like a game show, but not really. And now mm. that you put Taskmaster on, I'm like, fuck. I have so many shows I should have put on my list that I completely forgot there was this genre. Mm. So <laughs> that, that happens a lot. This is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to put up a, a panel or slash kind of thingy type kind of yeah, thing Yeah, yeah. So I think this is like a very British genre of TV show, which is why I completely forgot about mm. it. Where it's kind of like this British panel slash game show, mm. right? But the, but the, uh, the, uh, but what you don't try to do in this game show is win, basically. You, they just try to be as entertaining as possible. Yeah. Right. So with Taskmaster, it's basically like a game show where you take a bunch of comedians on and then you give them the same task, right? Mm. It could be anything, mm. right? It could range from getting a marble out of a bottle that's been sealed and like full of jelly or some shit. Right. There's some really obscure like things that you're like, yeah. why would you do this? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, there'll be like 30 socks. and will be like, find the orange. Yeah, in the sock. But all yeah. of them will have something different, and you're allowed to like sniff three or touch two. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so really they give. Stuff. Yeah. So they're given like a very, they're given a very ambiguously worded task. Mm, right. Mm, mm. Sometimes some tasks are more ambiguous than others, but it's up to the contestant to figure out what is the best way to do this task. Mm. Right? right. And so there's always like a life hack to solving it. Or? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's 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 not always a life. So hack. It, right. it'll be just a house, and right. you can do anything in the house with yeah. the challenge. So like for one challenge, it'll be like, they'll be in a room and they'll be like, hide three eggplants in the room. 
Okay. Whoever hides their eggplants the longest from the guy searching wins. Yeah. Oh, right, right, So it's right. like, you know, some some contestants hide the eggplant. Others smash up the eggplant and try to like squish it into something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and some people start eating whole eggplants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's, the rules are always set so ambiguous where any interpretation is correct and it's up to the taskmaster to decide if somebody deserves the point based right. on yeah, that. Yeah. You know, because maybe somebody did something it's a little, little too cheeky, and the Taskmaster, who's yeah. played by Greg Davis, who's amazing, will be like, "No, I, I don't like that." Yeah, right, that's right, why right. it's like perfect for trash taste because we can't follow the rules. For shit, <laughs> yeah, so know? the rules are ambiguous, sure. and then you never follow them, and then the guy in charge just yeah. changes his mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's 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 the point, right? I'm sure a lot of people will be like, "I can't believe he lost this task because he didn't follow the rules correctly." Well, right. that's, that's not really the point of Taskmaster. The point of Taskmaster is just to see the funny ways that different people, people can get creative different people yeah. approach the same task right right, right? oh that and sounds fun yeah, yeah yeah and and you can go as out of the box as you want mm. the only important thing is you gotta it's, it's kind of like you, you kind of you gotta like try to not to take the piss but also take the piss as well <laughs> right so right. i remember what like one uh, one task i remember recently was there was this switch in this room mm. and the task was figure out what this switch does Right, okay. and so what happens is like nine people out of ten, they start they start flipping on the switch, running out, looking at every light in the house, looking at yeah. every appliance in the house, yeah. seeing if anything's changed. Run back in and like flip the switch off, yeah. and then they, they they repeat this process right until they f finally figure out that the switch rotates a statue or something. That's okay. that's what that's what the switch mm. did. Yeah, one guy just cut the power to the switch right, and was just like, oh, the switch does nothing because it has no power. Boom, task <laughs> done. And that, oh, wow. So that's that's the kind of like thinking outside the box yeah. because it didn't necessarily, because he's technically right yeah. in that the Twitch does nothing in that moment because it's doesn't technically have not power. breaking the rules because there's no rules around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's it's very loose rules. Yeah, that's very, really very loose rules. One of the best things is, is that it's completely available on YouTube for free. Yep. You oh. can watch all of it nearly all of it on YouTube for free. Yeah. Uh, which is amazing. Very nice. Because the clips, they have a clips channel, which is amazing, but you can just watch the straight up the whole episodes. Oh, cool. And the, and the best part is, is that it's, it's structured in a way where every episode is its own self-contained thing. Right. Uh, in like a greater season. So uh, it'll be the same comedians for the whole season and right. the points will rack up. But you can come in at any episode and enjoy an episode. Mm, like yeah, there is mm. nothing that requires you to watch the previous episode. Right, right. If you want to and you, you'll get more out of it, you can go one, two, three, mm. four, up until the end, then you can see who the winner is. Yeah. yeah. So it's seasons, they have like five comedians and they change. Kind of, it's it makes it a bit more consistent and makes it have a, a lot more rewatchability and more right. reasons to tune in every week. Oh. It's yeah. really good. Really, really good. Yeah. And it's gonna blow up in the US. Highly, highly recommend it. We'll right. probably do a, do a Taskmaster I, special. Yeah. I, I think a lot, I know it's already popular because they made a US version that sucked as they always do. <laughs> of course they yeah. do. Um, but I think a lot more YouTubers and stuff will probably start doing some stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. It, it'll, it'll, it's gonna happen, I yep. think so. It's all good, right. Taskmaster it's good. is fucking amazing. And yeah. that's all my British TV shows that I recommend. Yeah. Uh, what is Mindhunter? Do, do any of you know what Mindhunter is? No. Oh, no. Mindhunter is so good. So Mindhunter, unfortunately, uh, at least to my knowledge, is not going to continue. I think you can Google this. Um, it had two seasons. Oh. And then for some reason, Netflix, or I think some creative staff involved didn't agree on some stuff. Maybe Kai can fact check for me. Uh, but it's basically ab about, uh, it's a really good Netflix like drama, but kind of loosely based on real events of why the, net, uh, the FBI decided mm. to start figuring out what psychopaths are. Mm. Mm. Is this a, a drama or? Like a drama, but kind of loosely based on real events, very right. loosely. Cause you know, they, they were a lot of the time, you know, way back in America, people were killing people with seemingly no motive. Mm. And nobody could understand why the, certain groups of these people were very, very organized, were, didn't seem to care about the killings, would kill like 10 people. And then some people in the FBI are like, huh, I think we should study these, people who are clearly very intelligent, very good at their crimes, and who clearly are not like the other criminals. Yeah, right. Uh, to They're not out. like other criminals. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, so the, you know, it's basically like, this is where it's a story about how basically psychopath profiling started. <laughs> Every true crime fan. <laughs> but, but dude, dude, literally, literally. They're literally, not like other literally, criminals. Literally. But dude, it's so good. Like the, the yeah. acting, the shots, the cinematography, the pacing is mm. amazing. Mm. Do we have info? It's on indefinite hold. It's on indefinite hold, oh, which, which basically means it's done. Yeah. And it's it sucks. So it, they go um, in the first season, 
they basically spend a lot of the seasons with this this FBI guy who's really dedicated to figuring out this because he really believes that if if they can figure out what mm -hmm. makes these psychopaths tick and why they're doing this, that it can help them profile in future mm -hmm. and figure out how to stop this happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, this is all based on like loosely based on true events and, and mm -hmm. whatnot. So they interview a very famous serial killer uh, over across the first season called Ed Camper, who is like a very- Oh yes, I know him. Very, very yeah, famous yeah, serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. And the actor in the series who portrays him is insane. He's so good. Oh, and I think I've seen guy, clips of that. The guy who like killed his mother, yes, and killed yes. his family, and then went on to kill. And he killed so many people. And the only reason they caught him is because he got bored and turned himself in. Yeah, right. And he was really well spoken. Didn't like you know. Wasn't I've angry. seen like interviews of the real Ed really Camper, creepy yeah. guy. It's really creepy because yeah. he would just be like he would be willing to admit anything and talk about it in full. And yeah. so a lot of the first season is just them talking to him, going mm. back and forth, trying to convince the higher ups that this is worth doing. Going back to Ed, talking to him. The main character getting a little bit too invested in talking to this serial killer. Right. And it's just really good. And it's it's just oh. such a good human drama whilst also kind of showcasing like a really fascinating part of FBI kind of history mm. and this kind of how they came up to start even doing this. Yeah, right. um, every true crime fan. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah. the second season, I think they have some Charles Manson stuff, mm -hmm. uh, another famous serial killer. Again, it's all really, really interesting. If you want a really good kind of crime uh, detective, not detective, but like, like, you know, a really unnerving drama, mm. this is an yeah. amazing one okay. to watch. Is this, did this series start off with some guy blowing off his head with a shotgun or something? It might have actually. I, you know, I watched this when it came out, yeah. and I remember that it's just been one of those shows where mm. I always check every like month. I'm like, yeah. is, is, <laughs> is anything happening? Because I'm, I really, it was getting so good. Yeah, and it's, it, it's the dad that went to but, go get milk and but, cigarettes. Yeah, literally, but, but even because because the two seasons are so good, yeah. I still feel yeah. comfortable recommending it. Being like, this is such it's a still good worth TV watching. Show. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. Because because mm. I remember Sydney was like, oh, I want to watch a show. It's uh, it's on Netflix and stuff like that. And mm. I'm like, what is it about? And then she was like, serial killers. I'm like. Great. Okay, okay, <laughs> Sydney. All right, you're 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 from Wisconsin, I get it, okay. Yeah. I remember just like walking in the room, seeing someone blow the head off with a shotgun. Does that happen? I, 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 can't, I can't, I don't Is know. Is that a massive spoiler? Huh? No, probably no, not. It's like <laughs> opening scene. Oh, um, yeah. And I just walked out, I was like. <laughs> Wait, was, okay. that, was that the one with the guy with the, the thing around his neck and blew up or a shotgun? Definitely a shotgun. Shotgun, oh, Okay, yeah. that's, yeah. The, that's the other like, evil yeah. geniuses. But it, but it, was, but it, but it, it was like a drama, it wasn't like a documentary. I've seen, I've seen Evil actually. Geniuses, yeah. that's, that's good Evil Genius is good, but horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mindhunter is amazing. If you want a, just a great drama, you want to be fascinated, enthralled, you yeah. gotta watch it. It's on oh, Netflix yeah. and right. uh, it's a shame that we're not gonna get a season three. Please bring back a season three. Yeah. So, Hannah Montana. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, I mean, okay, look, you've talked about you had a childhood I crush did. on Hannah Montana, so but like, sell me on the show. Cause I've seen- Oh no, it's not good. Uh, but that's the thing. I've seen bits and pieces of the show. It's not good at all. <laughs> I, think, I think though, in a weird- So is this your guilty pleasure show? No, um, I feel like this has a, a lot more uh, impact on me than I'd care to admit it does. <laughs> I hate to be like, but you know, when you're a child, you're impressionable. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not right. afraid to admit right. that Hannah Montana changed my life. That's then were you, how, how did uh, the, the, the change that Miley what's, went through uh, affect you? What's, I, what's, what's Hannah Montana about? I've not seen a single episode. Right, so there's, it's a great question, Gone, fantastic question. So there's <laughs> Hannah, who's Hannah Montana? Yeah, uh, well, that's like, from that's Montana. Like the, the stage name is Hannah Montana, it's this girl. Uh, I can't remember why she wants to be on stage. I'm sure just because her dad, because her dad is uh, Billy, Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus, who's an like, actual musician. Right. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure that I'm sure that helped get the show. Achy breaky heart. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Oh, okay. so it's about her who she's trying to get in school, but she doesn't want people in school to know that she's a pop star. So she lives this dual life where it's it's just Hannah. And she's living like, the best uh, of wait, both I can't, worlds. Uh, yeah, so that's where the best of both worlds come from. So she's trying to balance the nobody nobody can know I'm Hannah Montana, yeah. but also I got to go to school, but also I got to do these hit performances. Yeah. I can't remember what her real name is and uh, her name in the show is um, Hannah Smith. Uh, is it really? I don't, I don't know. fucking know. I think it's Hannah Montana's like the stage. I don't know. But I don't know, it's just fun. And I think um, in a weird way, um, I think like the whole Hannah Montana, the, the Disney and all that kind of got me into like American culture a lot more. Right, um, right. Got me into the path of kind of liking the idea of maybe performing. Yeah. Uh, because before that I had I had no no desire in my bone to, to perform or get on a stage. So basically you watched Hannah Montana and you went, 
I want the best of both I think worlds. It was, I, think it, I, I, I did want the best of both <laughs> worlds. And now as a, as a social media person, I was like, how about just one world and I'll make that the best one. Yeah. Uh, you but, combine the world. I combine the world. Think further, Hannah. Go further beyond. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know, in a weird way, the Disney Channel has this weird kind of intoxicating effect on kids that is like, yeah, you want to be a little fucking entertaining, you little slut. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. give me a fucking yeah. Disney. In a weird way, I think it kind of does. Yeah, um, it's, it's just basically the, you know, the, the show for theater kids. It's Selling yeah. Everyone, yeah. There, everyone on the Disney show is like a theater kid. And right? I mm -hmm. hate to admit it because I think the show sucks in a weird way, uh, but it was fun at the time. And I, did, I, was, I was obsessed with it. Again, it just got me into it. And at a time where nobody, uh, you know, because I find in school, if you're not a theater kid, yeah. you are never allowed to be a theater kid. Yeah. You can never join. You know what I mean? There is a cutoff period. Yeah. If you are not in the theater kid period by like age eight, you are not allowed in the yeah. theater. The thing, the thing is, like, like they are, you, had they be, are, you had to be born and yeah. raised as a theater They are a ruthless kid. bunch, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether they like to admit it or not, you can join the fo football team if you get better. Yeah. You cannot become a theater kid. <laughs> no, 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 and that, and that shit stays with you for life. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like once you, a theater you, kid, you, always a no, theater kid. No, no, no. You kid. ever meet someone and they were, they were like, yeah, I was a theater kid, and I'm like. I fucking knew oh, yeah. it. Of course yeah. I knew you it. are. I knew it. I can sense it from I, the aura. I, you know, you you feel the pressure. You for feel, sure. You, you feel you the give off some real high school embodiment. musical vibe yeah, yeah. shit. Like. <laughs> it stays with you, dude. Yeah. I yeah. swear they never drop it. Yeah. But again, like in school, I, I a part of me, I had that tiny little inkling where I was like, I'd love to try this. Yeah. But even at 10, I'm like, the window's gone. Because it's like, too late, yeah. Because the teachers wouldn't wouldn't pick you. Yeah. Because yeah. they would never give you the opportunity to do anything because they were like, well, we already know. We like these kids. Yeah, we know yeah. who can. These are the kids act. that act. Yeah. The, yeah. The, you're not the kid that acts. You're yeah. the kids that turn to the audition and then we make the kids that act feel good because right. we, yeah. we pick them. You know, it's like, and, and, and this is a thing that I felt in a weird way, I hate Disney with a burning passion. I mm. think they're a terrible company, uh, but credit where credit's due. So a, a little bit of it kind of brought out that, that I was like, fuck, you know, I kind of want to, but I didn't know how. How do you how do you get into it? And that's kind of like what kind of maybe planted the seed to then when I found anime right. that made me think, actually I want a voice act. Did you yeah. did you ever watch like high school musical? Yeah, I didn't really want to sing. Right. Something about acting kind of spoke to me. Uh but it I doesn't didn't. handle Tennessee. Yeah, she sings, but it was kind of the acting part of it. Oh, like a lot okay, of the Disney right. channel, a lot of these kid actors, I thought they were amazing. Yeah, yeah. Props to the kid actors. I don't know how the fuck they did that. I yeah. I yeah. can't act now, bro. Um yeah. you know, and I think that planted the seeds to make me wanna pursue something and mm -hmm. then discovered voice acting and that was like stars aligned, right? Mm. So that planted the seeds for me, but also, you know, I, a lot of people like they can't get into theater. And I, I, I like that there's ways or kind of motivations pushing us to do it. Cause you know, like people like fucking Gerard Butler, right? Or uh, who we'll talk about later, uh, uh, fuck, uh, uh, Don in uh, Mad Men. What's his fucking name in real life? God damn. John Hamm, John Hamm. You know, those two are both school teachers. Yeah. Oh, just, okay got into acting mm. at like age 40. Mm. And I love that shit. I want mm. more of that. Yeah, yeah. I hate it when it's like, if you didn't act from age 10, get the fuck out of the industry. Yeah. You're a joke. It's like, I hate that shit. I think <laughs> acting should be like, if you want to try it, go the fuck ahead. Yeah. If you don't, if nothing comes of it, who cares? Mm. Yeah. I think having a way to express yourself and having a way to perform is so, uh, just fulfilling Absolutely. and satisfying. Yeah. And I don't know why fucking Hannah Montana put that in my brain, but thank you, Hannah Montana. Thank you, Miley. Express Rant yourself. Over. Expr express yourself, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, then let's talk about Mad Men, I guess. All right, Mad Men. I know the name yeah. of this show. Never Fuck, seen dude. a single episode of it. Yeah, Holy it's, it's like- Holy shit, what It's a good like show. advertising, right? This is like the Chad show before Chad shows existed. <laughs> like John Hamm, <laughs> Yeah. Plays like a giga chat. I love John Hammer as right. an actor. He's a, but like it's great because yeah. in the show it starts out as like yeah John, John uh, I think he's called Dia Don Don in the show he you know he's this kind of he knows everything mm. he's smart he's killing it but as the show goes on they they slowly introduce flaws to him and, and humanize him um, and, and in a way that feels great mm. and and it's about it deals with a lot of the topics at the time. Like this is like 1950s. It mm, deals with right. a lot of sexism. Mm. It deals with a lot of misogyny. Uh, it deals with other cultures not being uh, recognized at the mm. time and how that interacts. <laughs> Mad Men is about Don and his, and the ad agency. They make ads for people. Okay, so okay. a lot of the time, the show is just, how do we make this ad? Like for newspapers and billboards and stuff like that, I guess? Big brands. They're, they're like right, the premium right. A-grade yeah. marketing company in New York, Manhattan. Okay. Well, this, this yeah. is when like ad agencies started to become like a real big oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Where yeah, yeah, they yeah. started realizing, oh, if you advertise correctly, you can make like a shit ton of money, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
you know, a lot of the drama comes from, okay, we're interacting with this client. They mm. have these needs and how that character interacts. And it's a great <clears throat> way of introducing characters for a few episodes that have a big impact on the main cast. Mm. Yeah. And then how that kind of plays out in their life. Yeah. Uh, and there's a great scene that I feel like after you've lived in Japan, you're like, yes, I understand this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have like, a, there's a scene where they like have a fucking, uh, they meet with like Toyota or something. One of the yeah. Japanese car brands. Right. And th they, made like the ad agency compete against another ad agency to make the best ad. And they he walked in like geek chairs, like, I will not make an ad to compete. You will buy my services or you are not welcome. And they Damn. go out and, I, and it was just like this whole thing of like, I will not dance for you. I, will. Yeah. I was like, I feel that so much now. <laughs> this happens so much in Japan where I have to do <laughs> bullshit. Wow. No, no, but it's great. Yeah. It's a great show if you what, wanna- what, what, what makes it good? What makes it good? Characters. It's, characters? I think uh, like one, like like Better Call Saul, which I'll talk about, like yeah. really good characters, really good writing. Yeah. You know, it's it's a slow burn. Nothing crazy happens. Yeah. Nothing explosive mm -hmm. happens every every episode. It's just, if you like people talking, you like good dialogue, you like development. I, I like good dialogue. It's it's just a great show. And yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's very slow to start with. I think that's the problem with that. A lot of people don't right. get into it. Because right. it feels like, all right, when's something gonna happen? Mm. But they're just laying the foundation. Yeah. I really love Mad Men. Cause, cause like I've always found the advertising world just uh, interesting to begin with. I feel like I explained mm. it poorly by the yeah. way. It's, I, it's, it's like, especially <laughs> seeing like the evolution of the advertising world. Like you look at like the old days in like mm. the sixties or something mm. and like an advertisement would literally be, here's my product. Here's what it does. Right. Let me list off all the benefits of using this product. And then yeah. like, I think like somewhere along the line, I, I'm not sure if it was like, like it must be TV, I reckon. You know, it, it was TV. No, yeah. this was this was on TV. By yeah, the way. but somewhere along the line, I think like the most, the biggest example I can give of is like uh, I can think of is like the cigarette industry, where right. Marlboro started like they they stopped marketing their products and they started like marketing a feeling, a lifestyle. Yeah, you know? yeah. Where yeah. Instead of just say, being like, hey, here are cigarettes, they're gonna fucking kill you. Uh, by yeah. the way, you know, buy our product. They're they're like, this is the American way. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like peak. 1950s America, where they're figuring that stuff out. Wasn't yeah, it exactly. like, uh, wasn't it like Coca Cola that were like one of the first ones to do it? Where it might have been really Coca -Cola just like, well. it's this is the feeling that you get. Yeah. This is what it's like. It's like the how, how yeah. it feels to chew five gum. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like that, it's like that shit, you know? But it's great. It's, yeah. it's a long one. It's got like nine seasons. Okay. Right. Uh, but you slowly watch Don's life mm. uh, change <sighs> quite a lot. <sighs> but it's good. It's good though. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's worth it. I got into it and I, I couldn't stop. Like it was, it was enthralling. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have Futurama. I mean, need I say much about Futurama? Yeah. Honestly, I, mean, yeah. I was. I, I, we, we, we were all this. Close I guess to we putting were all it on. this close to putting Futurama it's, on. It's like, I don't know. It's like, how do you make like? It's it's like Matt Groening decided I'm gonna make a show that's funnier than Simpsons, has a storyline, has characters that you love more, and just hits every note. I feel yeah. as well. The humor is a little more geared towards like the older generation, I feel. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause like, cause you know, Simpsons has a well, lot of early like- Early Simpsons is very good. Well, early Simpsons, yeah. But like around like comparing it to the Simpsons during the time that Futurama was airing, like alongside it. definitely it. felt yeah. like they cared way more about Futurama. Yeah, 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 yeah This yeah, is yeah, kind exactly. of like a throwback to more the yeah. old school Simpsons yeah. type of shit, right? Yeah, yeah but exactly. it looks cleaner. Yeah, I mean, one thing I've always loved about Futurama is that they actually gave a shit about the sci-fi setting yeah. in the oh, yeah. world. Yeah. It wasn't just like a, ha ha, here, wacky setting, ha ha. They're like, there are so many episodes in Futurama that they really delved into this like really like niche scientific oh, yeah. concept or mm. something like that. It was basically kind of like, peak Rick and Morty before mm. Rick and Morty existed, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Uh, like. The Futurama, and, <laughs> Futurama ran so Rick and Morty could walk. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many Rick and Morty fans are gonna piss off with that. Yeah, I like Rick and Morty. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, especially like when they started delving into more of the story aspect oh, of yeah. Futurama. Holy shit! Oh, some oh, of the later, insane. some of the later episodes made me cry. Yeah, like, like yeah, fucking fr Fry's dog is gonna oh. fucking stick with. I, I, I mentioned that, you know, and everyone, everyone has the exact <laughs> same reaction. Just like really funny jokes as well, like using the sci-fi set to like a huge advantage. Mm. Yeah. Like I just like, one of the first episodes, right? It's like Bender goes in the suicide booth, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tries to, and tries to con it. And yeah. I feel like that tells you literally that. everything you need to know about Bender. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy doesn't want to pay even for his own suicide. We'll yeah. try and con it and then gives up immediately. Like it's like, they just, it's such good writing. And, and you can tell that everyone on the team cared so much about making mm. the show as funny as possible. Yeah. yeah. And it, I just love it so much. And I love the episode where Fry drinks like a hundred 
coffees. One of my favorite ones. <laughs> I fucking love that episode so that's much. So, that's such a good fucking I episode. I fucking love that episode <laughs> oh. so much. Yeah, oh, yeah, what I love about Futurama is just the cast as well. It's just, yeah. it's it's rare that you see such a perfectly balanced cast. Mm. Mm. But like, like even I think it's like even better than The Simpsons. Oh yeah, oh, you know, yeah. In, term, in terms of balance, the side characters definitely shine in that show. And yeah, even yeah. like, even like the every now and then characters that you see, and like just some of the concepts that you see, like you know, obviously because like, uh, you know, because it's Futurama and like Matt Groening show, it's like okay, we'll throw in maybe like a couple of like celebrity mm. nod-ins and stuff like that. But yeah. the fact that these like celebrity cameos make their way into Futurama as just a head, yeah, well, Richard Nixon, <laughs> in, right? in a yeah, glass yeah. is like that's that's like immediately way more funnier than just like, here's the character that you all know and love that just comes into the frame. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a little more interesting. Uh, and then- And then I guess the Arcane. fine- uh, I have two final ones. Arcane. <laughs> sure. Arcane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Joey, come on. All right, uh, what about Vertical No, Soul? so Arcane is, is fantastic. There's like 70 clips of you guys talking about Arcane. I Let's just think that Arcane should be watched as your weekly reminder to yeah. watch Arcane if you haven't. Yeah. Right. I am, I am, frothing at the thought of getting a season two. All right, duly noted. Um, Do you want to talk about Better Call Saul? And I just think they released it behind no. the scenes recently. That was fantastic. Right. Yeah. That really just showed how much love and care went into it. Yeah. I uh, agree. Yeah, well, what, what you said, Connor. Yeah, like, what oh, you said. I don't know what more I can say about Arcane. So so it, it's a Watch show Arcane. that hits the ground running. It's good. Save me. It's uh, it's uh, Joey's favorite show. I love it. All right. Hunter, 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 Hunter and Arcane, my top two favorites. So I figured that Gaunt would, well, would not put Breaking Bad because maybe we're going to talk about it anyway. I don't yeah. know if maybe Gaunt did put Breaking Bad. I figured we're going to talk about Breaking Bad okay, and that universe. Spoiler, spoiler. I didn't actually put Breaking Bad. I've never even one. seen it. But I figured we would want to talk about it in some capacity. Okay. Because I mean, it's like, it's Breaking fucking Bad. Yeah. My I favorite mean, show. Are, are you putting Breaking Bad or are you putting Better Call Saul? It's the Soul? universe, it's the universe. The universe? Yeah, okay. I, I think like, cause it's- What, what is that universe? I, I would put both of them on here, but what, I feel what like- What is that universe no called? Point. Okay. The, the Metaverse? The, the, the Vince Gilligan universe? I don't know, like oh, yeah. the, the the whole world of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul is fantastic. And honestly, I mean, the only reason I put Better Call Saul is because it just finished recently and it was, it was insane. It's yeah. so good. Mm. Like one of the best TV shows I've ever watched, like flat out. Yeah, uh, wow. Just- I mean, I've been watching this show weekly. Well, not weekly, like since it aired weekly, uh, since I was in university. Right. Um, Cause I was watching Breaking Bad when that was airing weekly when I was like 15. Mm. And I just think that there's something about it that, I mean, it clearly captivates everyone online as well. Yeah. yeah. People are in love with this world and the show. And I think it's just because of how just careful and how meticulous all the character writing is. Mm. Yeah. And how, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns in Breaking Bad and in Better Call Saul, but it doesn't feel like it's done for any particular shock value. It's like, you know, if a character dies, it, it is a big, big deal. And it's dealt mm. with really severely in the show. Mm. And a character's death has such rippling effects on and everyone in the cast and it bothers them and it changes how they view things. And I, I can't do it justice. I mean, Breaking Bad and Medical Soul, you probably know all about it. It is just amazing. And I hate being that normie guy who's like, watch Breaking Bad, it's a good TV show. But it just <laughs> it's, is. It's literally- Like it just is an amazing show. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if this is going to be a hot take or not, but like, yeah, I've, I've seen Breaking Bad. Mm. I think it's an amazing show. Mm -hmm. I have zero emotional attachment to it, which is why I mm. didn't put it on my list, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It like, I think Breaking Bad epitomizes everything that I guess does not interest me about <gasps> TV, what? like American TV shows. What? What do you where, mean? Where it's just, it's- What do you mean? I, I, okay, it's- I'm not my child already, God. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm like- it, Okay, tell me why. Tell me like, why. like the my perception of Breaking Bad is every reason why I am an anime fan, if that makes sense. Okay. Right? okay. Where I think Breaking Bad isn't like, I look at it as a critic, right? I think it's an amazing show. It's mm. got so many moving pieces. There's so much care and attention that's mm. been put into the writing and the themes and mm -hmm. how how the uh, how the developments of the show evolve and everything mm -hmm. like that. But it's 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 polished. It's, it's to me, it's like it's it's a show that's like polished to a point that it's how. how I don't, I'm, I don't know how to say it. It's polished to a point Kill where me. it just doesn't interest me. I, it's, is, that, is that weird? Is that weird? It's like, well, I, Bro, I never even you, gave it a chance. Why, <laughs> why would you not want to see the pinnacle in like TV storytelling? 
Uh, I, th I think one, one, okay, one big thing like, again uh, is that it's so grounded in reality, right? The, uh, part of the reason why mm. so many people are attached to so many of these characters mm. is because they they feel like such like such well. You don't want your characters to feel real. <sighs> He's an Isekai fan. Yeah, but like I think <laughs> I think it is an extremely tall order to make characters that feel real, and and somehow Breaking Bad and Medical Soul are masters at making you care about these characters oh, yeah. who are so well written mm. and, and, and believable. Yeah, yeah, mm. they, they are incredibly well written to like- I, To a I, fault. I, I, That's I, so I, strange. I, I've never heard anyone have that complaint. Yeah, no, I know. Mean, I, I don't even know if it's a complaint. You right. know, I, I, I'm complaining that the show is too good. We're gonna study is, Gant's brain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean here's, here's the thing. Some, sometimes you love, sometimes I like a bit of rawness in the expression. Mm. Sometimes mm. I like a bit of unpolished, you know, unpolishedness. You know, sometimes I like it when something is just, mm. is not like this well refined. <laughs> It's too clean. It's weird. This, it, this, this is such it, a bizarre argument. This, this, is, <laughs> this is going to build on one of the shows that I'm going that I've put on my, okay, okay. Right, which is okay. This is half of a hot take, right? Okay. I like. I think Breaking Bad is an amazing show, but I I have zero attachment to Breaking Bad. I can understand if you didn't have zero attachment to it, but huh? I can understand that. Yeah. I just think I, I loved it a lot. Maybe it's because I, you know, when I first watched it, I was like 16. Yeah. And I've rewatched it since and I still love it. I just think it's just amazing. Like it yeah. just does everything so goddamn well. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. That's why I guess that's why it's like fucking number two on IMDb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think that you, do you think Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad now that it's over? That's tough. Um, I think- If you had to pick one of the two. I think Breaking Bad offers a more complete package of hitting every kind of emotion. Yeah. Saul is a very, very slow burn yes. that really believes that in its storytelling and its characters to, mm. to tell an amazing story. Yes. Right. It knows that the characters of in the universe are so strong that they can really slow it down. Yeah. Mm. And and you know, because the first two seasons. It's a very, very slow burn. Not that much happens. And it's like for two seasons, it's very slow. Mm. It's all just setting the stage, building up these characters, showing you how, why they're gonna be why they are. Mm. And yeah. it's like, it's so rare to see a prequel that almost improves on what the main thing did mm. and kind of offers even more reason to go back and watch the, first, right. the, yeah. the original. Yeah. Like, you know, the, uh, Jimmy's character of Saul in Breaking Bad is is, fa is very funny, very funny loyal man. But yes. it just make Better Call Saul turns him into this amazing grounded character mm. where you can understand why he went down the paths he went down. Right. Yeah, just it's just a great drama. It's it, but it's slow. It's very slow. Yeah, and I think that's why Breaking Bad might just edge it out for me. Right, Breaking Bad just hits the ground running. Right, yeah, probably because it had to do a pilot, and whereas <laughs> well, Be yeah. Better Call Saul could had the. Had the brand ready had to be like, wiggle, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, the reason, I think a lot of people wouldn't watch Better Call Saul or wouldn't have got past the first season if they didn't know it was part of Breaking Bad because mm. it is just, it, it it just trusts that you want to see the payoff. Right. Yeah. I, th I, th I think I've got a perfect analogy of why I, I'm i not personally attached to Breaking Bad. Right. So Breaking Bad is like if you built an AI computer and you programmed it to write the perfect TV show, that okay. would be Breaking Bad. Okay, you know, it, okay. it, it feels like it is the perfect TV show with with correct Spanish in it. Apparently, the Spanish <laughs> is dreadful. I don't know. How to Spanish. <laughs> apparently, okay. apparently, the Spanish is like unwatchable for Spanish people. I'm so sorry, Spanish people. But at least in Better Call Saul, they have an actual uh, Spanish person uh, playing a character, and he's really fucking good. Gustavo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Gustavo is not even remotely Spanish. Oh. And apparently his Spanish is dreadful. Oh really? Yeah, apparently it's fucking unbearable because uh, he's supposed to be playing a Chilean dude. Yeah. Uh, but he's uh, from like. Denmark or something and has African descent. Oh. So yeah. has no Spanish ties remotely. Um, so people are like, bro, his, his Spanish is doo doo. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's I think that's what that's what I mean. It's like I, yeah. it feels like the perfect TV, TV show, but it feels so good that it feels like it was written by a computer. And why would you not want so, that? So you though? say so. What you're basically saying is that like some flaws in the show are good Isakai because okay. it, it adds your, personality. Isakai has actually rotted your brain. I mean, it has. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, but like <laughs> sometimes, okay, even watch like sometimes one of my favorite things is kind of like feeling a connection between the person who made this particular thing, mm. uh. Uh, this particular piece of fiction. Um, I like feeling like there is, I understand what they're trying to portray mm. or express, mm. you know? With Breaking Bad, I feel 
complete coldness because I feel it's just amazing. It's perfectly written, but I don't know what you know, Vince. So there's nothing wrong with like the like a show being like inherently perfect in its writing or like incredibly good in its writing. Yeah. But like you need some kind of thing that gives you a connection between you as a viewer and the person who made it trying to express themselves yeah. through the work. I mean, right? I mean, that's why Evangelion was like- yeah, that's I was why, about to say that's the most mean, Evangelion thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I mean, that's why Evangelion is like one of my favorite anime of all time. You know? It doesn't right. I, doesn't necessarily have to make sense. I wonder yeah. if that's just a person by person thing. So I feel like I get it. Oh, it's definitely like a person I, by I, person I, thing. I, yeah. I feel like I understand the messages they're trying to put out and mm. the feelings yeah. they're trying to portray. Yeah, I, where, where well, I, I feel I feel it's the same thing with music. It's like sometimes yeah. you just want to listen true, to true. a good song and not give a shit about who it's made by. Yeah, and then yeah. sometimes you want to be like, well, I need to care about this song because I want to care about this person yeah. who made it. Yeah, I know Chris loves better cool songs. <laughs> good taste. Sheep. All right, who's All right. next? Who is next then? Let's go for this person. Jerry. Oh, Ooh, it's me. Okay. Jerry. We're going in order. Yeah. All right. Yeah, time yeah. for some weird shit now. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Boxu. Boxu is the monthly subscription Japanese snack box that delivers authentic Japanese snacks straight to your door. They work with family businesses all over Japan to send you a new theme of goodies every single month. Go on, where you got there? Well, God, I'm glad you asked. This is the Seasons of Japan box. Ooh. This is basically the MVP, the highlights of all the Japanese seasons and flavors in one box. Yeah. And luckily for you guys, when you have your first order of boxu, this is the first box you will receive. Following that, the boxes you will receive will be the ones that match the themes of every single month. I gotta say, each box is completely packed, and it also comes with a booklet that teaches you all about the snacks, unique flavors, and where they come from. What are some of the unique flavors we have today, gentlemen? Well, I found this uh, Kumamon Black Sesame Ooh, Rice Cracker right okay. here. These are, these are actually you really good. You see that mascot everywhere. Go on, what do you have there? I have here a Tsukitsamu Anpan Chocolate. Ooh, this, I've never tried this that boy one open. Before. Joey, how does that one taste? Give it a taste. It looks like a coaster. Does it taste like a coaster or is it full of flavors? It tastes delicious. That looks good. Yeah, that actually does look good. Oh fuck. That is delicious dog. Damn, I might have to reorder this one just for this one snack. Honestly, just give me this one snack, Boxy, please. Oh, God, I know you're enjoying that, but if you give Boxy as a present, you get to give someone you love a fun and unique food experience Woo! and support our channels at the Woo! same time. It's a win-win. And don't forget to click the link in the description and use our coupon code TRASHTASTE15 to get $15 off your very first Boxy order. I'm helping. Back to the episode. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is oh, this? Oh. Some, what is this? Oh, sorry, so yeah, some of these are, are very Australian. I, I'm praying to God, if there is a single person watching this episode right now who looks at all okay. nine of these and goes like, yeah, okay. I can, like these. Can you just name what they all are very quickly? Yeah. Okay, so we got Simpsons, Spicks and Specs, Gaki no Tsukai, Adam's Family, Mythbusters, Ed and Nettie, Fat Pizza, Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures, and Arthur. Okay. Wait, okay, so- I, 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 what, I, I, Which one would you like to start I, with? I know, I know what this three by three screams. What? I don't watch television. Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is literally, because half of these are from your fucking childhood. Yes, of course they are. I don't, don't fucking watch, watch, I don't watch TV okay, series. So Simpsons, why Simpsons over say like what you mentioned? Okay, so I was really debating, at first I put in Futurama, mm -hmm. but then the more I thought about it, I have more of a childhood connection with the Simpsons. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Even though Futurama came out, what year did it come out? Like. Uh, no, not too long not after. I'm too sure. long mm. after, right? It was like mid two thousands, I think, or I late two thousands. Exactly. Can't look it up. But I feel Simpsons was that like one cartoon that has always been around, and I have like yeah. fond yeah. childhood memories of watching Simpsons with my sister more mm. than Futurama. So like the the, the only like I guess uh, childhood memory I have of me watching Simpsons was m before. Uh, my my dad inevitably threw it out. He had this like old CRT TV, huh. right? And he was gonna throw it out. And I was like, no, no, father, I want it. If it does it still work? And he's like, yeah, if you like get the antenna thing on it and yeah. you extend the fucking yeah, long yeah, ass yeah, antennas yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah. then it still works. And I'm like, okay, can I put it in my room? And so there would be nights where like my dad would be watching some kind of fucking TV show I didn't give a shit about. And my sister and I would go into my room and we would take turns holding the antenna on the TV to get good reception enough to watch reruns of The Simpsons. Oh my God. <laughs> and so every, and because it was played, it played on channel 10, there were like ad breaks every like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time an ad break came on, we'd be like, all right, your turn to hold the antenna. <laughs> and I would just have like fond childhood memories of that. And like God that would damn. happen yeah. after Futurama came out because in Australia, it would be a rerun of the Simpsons. And then immediately after it would be an episode of nice, Futurama. Nice. Right, right. right. Um, So it would, it would kind of be like a Simpsons Futurama combo for me. Mm. But 
I still remember more and vividly remember more characters and jokes and stuff like that from The Simpsons. I consumed a lot more Simpsons than Futurama. Oh, yeah. There was way more of it. There was yeah, way yeah. more of it, yeah. And I th- because of like, I remember I grew up with The Simpsons. Oh, you yeah. Know? yeah. The, the yeah. Simpsons was, The Simpsons existed since I was born. Yeah. And, and you know? like a game every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It but came like, out It came out every night. Yeah. But then yeah. I remember when Futurama first started airing and yeah. it was like a new thing. Yeah. So yeah. Simpsons yeah. has just like always been there. When did yeah. Futurama come out? 1999. 1999. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. yeah. what, what is your, do you have a favorite Simpsons episode that comes to mind? Uh, when you think Peak Simpsons? Peak Simpsons for me is the 24 short stories about Springfield. Do you know that one? Which one's, what's the plot of that one again? It's basically just like they, it's it's basically just like a fucking Quentin Tarantino-esque, like just short stories about different characters in Springfield that all coincide with one another. And there's a lot of like movie parodies and shit like that. Oh, right. oh, okay. They parody like Pulp Fiction multiple That's times cool. and mm-hmm. like just like classic movies and stuff, but with Simpsons characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just a really, and also like uh, we used to have like DVDs of like the Treehouse of Horrors. I love the Treehouse Those, those yeah. are like classics. Those were like- Even peak. I remember the Treehouse like, of like, Horrors. Like the the Shining parody yeah. episode yeah. of The Simpsons is like, that's peak. I love the uh, Who Shot Mr. Burns as Who well. Who Shot Mr. Yeah, Burns and also it. like the, the robot house of death and stuff like that. Oh my God, yeah. Well, it's like the, they like implement like an AI like house and yeah. it's yeah. voiced by all the characters who played James Bond. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, it's I, like, it's voiced by Pierce Brosnan. You know? I, I think <laughs> Who Shot Mr. Burns was how I discovered what cliffhangers were. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> honestly, I, I remember it was just as, like genuinely good storytelling. Yeah, I remember as a kid, yeah. I was watching Who, the, who shot Mr. Burns part one yeah. and then it ends, right? Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean it's ending? <laughs> what? Where is part two? Where, 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 where is one? Wait, what do you mean I have to wait? So I'm like five or something, right? Yeah. Like, but like it, the writing was so good that, yeah. you know, it got a fucking child invested. Yeah, and I, and I think as well, like I had it really good because like, obviously Simpsons started way before any of us mm-hmm. were born. Yeah. And so like a lot of the, the Simpsons that we saw on that shitty CRTV were reruns of the older seasons, which mm, anyone right. who's watched enough Simpsons will agree oh, Simpsons. was yeah. peak Simpsons, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, when did you stop watching The Simpsons? When did you all stop watching The Simpsons? <sighs> when when did I stopped watching TV. Yeah, pretty much. I used to watch on, on in the UK, right? Mm. On Sky, Yeah, the paid uh, broadcasting, which my dad bought because he wanted to watch football matches. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, oh, we'll buy this. And then the only reason that, you know, the wife won't get angry at me. So it's for the family because we got other channels as well. Right, right, right. right. So we had, we had that and, um, they used to play four episodes mm. uh, a, a day from 6 to 8 p.m. Damn. So every single day after school, just chill in the living room, do whatever I need to do, and just watch four episodes of Simpsons yeah, every yeah. single day. I remember, I think it was like on weekends they would do like three or four yeah. episode runs of Simpsons. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, so I, many ends. I can, I can remember the exact moment for me that mm. The Simpsons died in oh, my sure. mind. Right. Here we go, here we go. It's, it's actually like the Simpsons movie, I think. Oh, that, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fair. That, I would like, say, w- yeah. I remember like, oh, okay. So, oh, wow, Simpsons has got a movie. That's a big fucking deal. I haven't yeah. like, at that point I hadn't like watched you know, I grew up with The Simpsons, but I wasn't like regularly watching you, you it. You don't realize that like season like nine or 10 is shit as yeah, a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, this is funny he he thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, Michael and Jackson, I, huh? yeah. And then I remember like people fucking losing it over fucking Spider Pig or something. Oh, I got and, hated that. And I'm just like, what? What? This yeah. isn't funny. Why is yeah. why are people laughing? That was definitely the least funniest part of the Simpsons movie. That was like the And there pic- were many not funny parts of the yeah, Simpsons. Yeah, that was like I remember back when that came out, people like quoting it. I'm like, this is the pickle rick of my time. <laughs> it, you know? It, that, it literally was. Yeah, I was just like, why are people co- quoting Spider Pig? It's not even Spider Pig ransom pickle rick could walk. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I fucking loved, especially like when we were probably getting in Simpsons when all the best Simpsons games were out. Yeah, oh, like hit, like and, hit run. and run. Oh. Yeah, the, the one in the arcade. The arcade ones were the fucking fighting, awesome. The fighting one. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, that, that was so a good. fucking coin guzzler. That was peak Simpsons right uh, there. But yeah, I mean, Simpsons are great. Simpsons, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, Simpsons I, is great. I, what the yeah. fuck is Spix and Specs? Okay, Spix and Specs is a TV show. That sounds Australian. It looks it's, like a kid's show. It's a quiz show. Um, it's a quiz show. It's a music quiz show. Is it like a, a gay pride show? No, they no, got, not at all. They just happen to have a rainbow. Okay, okay. A rainbow's like dope. But it's named after, I think, a uh, uh, a Beach Boys song, I think. Right. But basically it's this kind of, it's kind of like, imagine like QI, mm. right? But yeah. except 
all of the questions and all of the guests are yeah. musicians. Okay, yeah, this is right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. We, and obviously, you know, I'm a fucking music nerd, right? Yeah. So it's like, that show was really cool because not only would they get really cool musicians on mm. as guests, but mm -hmm. they also like, it was hosted by an Australian comedian mm. right. um, called Adam Hills. Um, and he had, you know, in, in, in each team, there would be like different kinds of, you know, music themed like quizzes. Mm -hmm. And like, they would also break into like a talk show where they would like talk about guests and stuff like that. I think one of my, one of the weirdest segments that they had was they had this quiz early on in Spicks and Specs called Musician or Serial Killer. And they were basically what they would do is they would show a black and white picture. Mm. And just by looking at the picture, of the person, it's like a mugshot, like front oh, face. Right. You would have to guess: is this a musician or a serial killer? That's pretty good. That's, good. That's also wow. Yeah. And and <laughs> a lot of the times, I and 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 as a kid, I watched that, and you know, you'd play along, obviously, because you you know, it's yeah. no fucking prior knowledge or anything. This is before true crime shit yeah. was a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, it was really weird that I swear, the more someone looked like a serial killer, the more likely they were, more likely they were a musician, I and vice it. versa. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. And so there was stuff like that. There was another one where it was like, um, they took song lyrics, put them through Google Translate to like some Asian language yeah. and then yeah. translated it back in English. Oh. And then they would read that out and you'd have to guess what the song is. <laughs> and so like, it was just like really cool ideas for quizzes. Yo, yo, note that down Kai. That's a, that's no. a great idea for an after dark quiz. Honestly, no, I like, no <laughs> honestly though, like I came up with like, you know, I came up with so many like quiz ideas and stuff like that for my videos through shows like this. Yeah. Because it was just like really interesting and fun ways where you could kind of, oh, another one where it was like, there was like a, an exercise bike that was connected to a vinyl player, like a vinyl record player. Right. And you had to pedal the bike at a certain speed for the song to be able to play at a oh, regular that's tune. Cool. And then that's you have to quickly guess yeah, yeah. what the song is, that's for example. Yeah. It's just stuff that like that. sounds good. Yeah. It's a really, really good show. Even if you have no idea about music, just the fact that it's like hosted by a comedian who's mm. really funny, mm. has a lot of really cool musical guests and just like the quiz segments are just really creative. Yeah. Which is like really, really good show. Um, and then I guess top right is the only Japanese show I put in Gaki no Tsukai. Basically every American, uh, you know, like uh, punishment game mm. remake, mm. remake yeah, came yeah. from this. Okay. So that Silent Library is one of the most famous ones. These guys came up with it first. Yeah. Um, another one. Can you explain what Silent Libraries is? Silent Library, okay. So basically Silent- well, Everyone is a Silent Library. Yeah, Silent okay, okay. Library basically is just, mm -hmm. Again, these guys started first, but basically you would go into a public library, sit around a desk, and then you would hand out uh, like cards. Mm. You'd flip them over, one person would get the punishment, and then mm. they would have to do a punishment, but react to yeah. it silently. Yeah. And right. these punishments in this show were fucking brutal. I mean, Japanese TV show is a, is a big history yeah. and reputation for being yeah. way too Like Takeshi's yeah. Castle is another show that I thought about yeah. putting they, on here. They but definitely like, pushed the line in terms oh, of like what you can get away with dude, on TV. Some of the things that they did on this show were like actual torture. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like uh, one segment that they did was, um, 24 hour no reaction uh, pie face challenge where basically one of the comedians in this group would live in this like mock house mm -hmm. and the entire time for 24 hours, the rest of the cast are throwing like pies at his face and he's not allowed to react for 24 hours. What? Like, yeah, it's just shit like that. He's just being pie boarded. You're being pie boarded for 24 hours straight. Insane. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Another one was like 24 hour tag. So oh. they would be inside of a gymnasium and then randomly a dude would pop up and if you got tagged by them, then you'd have to get punished for 24 hours. I, I, it's just crazy. I noticed in Japanese TV, mm. when you've done your time, so to say, you've, yeah. you've done the, the brutal stuff and done all the, you've put yourself out there a bunch. You get to be the react Andy. Yeah. You, when you become, you become the show when you, host. When you become royalty in Japan's yeah. comedy scene, you get to react. Yeah. That's that, cause that's, that's who the big dogs are. Yeah. Cause they're on everything. Every big celebrity face you see, yeah. it's always the motherfuckers in the corner yeah. of the screen. Yeah, all the comedians that you see just in the react corner of the screen, they started off doing shit like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, we've done our time. Yeah, like we've yeah, done yeah. our they service. Worked way, they yeah. worked their way up the system, yeah, yeah. man. It's like Hunger Games and maybe you get a, a successful long <laughs> yeah, yeah, career exactly. after it instead. Exactly. But like, on, like, honestly, if you're a YouTuber, just oh, watch yeah. episodes of Gaki Not Sky and it's just a treasure trove of content. For yeah, you. I mean, so. you've definitely seen some clips of oh, this yeah. somewhere. Oh yeah. I mean, that guy is the fucking, oh! Yeah, guy, he's right? the, oh! oh yeah. Play the clip, Muna. Oh! 
But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's like one of my favorite Japanese shows going on. Also, yeah. I learned a lot of Japanese watching that show as a child. I believe it. Yeah. Um, and then Japanese quiz game. Japanese language. quiz game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, MythBusters, obviously, everyone knows fucking Wait, MythBusters. Why are you keeping the Adam's, uh, Adam's family? Adam's family. Yeah. Okay, so this was during. I never uh, watched Adam's family. Okay, so this was the original Adam's family TV show from the sixties. I was wondering um, why I was in black and white. Yeah. So this is from the 60s. Why do Carlo? This is this was this was during a time where I had this like weird obsession with watching a lot of old films. Okay. So yeah. I would like this was during the time where I would be like, so uh, was Citizen Kane actually a good movie? I'm gonna go and check it out. Right. So right. I would watch like Citizen. It was okay. I would I would watch Citizen Kane and like all the you know the Orville films and like all of the fucking. This is where this is this how you started your auteur phase? Yeah, I was yes. And then it ne- okay. I, I was <laughs> like, then I was like, I then it never music. stopped. I was like, I'm not like those other kids watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> Fuck off! I'm gonna watch Adam's Family. What do you mean? Let's cook, Walt. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think what really was cool about Adam's Family, like the even though this is fuck what a 60 year old show at this point, yeah, it's still fucking. Hilarious. Hilarious. You know, whenever you like, you know, you watch modern TV shows that pop from the TV, and you're like, oh, that's mm. shit. Whenever you're, yeah. in the, whenever you, for some reason, in a place and old TV shows come on, yeah. they're always so good. Yeah, they are. I yeah. don't know if I'm like crazy, but like they're always well, the, just funny. They they must be good in order to have still to still be, be played still survive. TV yeah, right? that maybe, maybe yeah, maybe it's like survivor bias of like, well, yeah, it's because you're seeing the best of the best that we remember and right, yeah. right. cherish and made sure we kept in HD. Yeah. I'm sure out of every one Adams Family, there was twenty really shit oh, yeah. shows. Of course, no of course, one cares. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, like but I mean, what, you know, what is Adams Family about? I I just know yeah, the Adam's name. Family. Adams Family is, is about it a comedy. Uh, is it a drama? What it's, is it? It's a comedy. So Adams Family, I think it's based off a comic book series or a book or something, please confirm Kai. But basically it's about this really fucking weird family called the Adams Family uh, mm-hmm. that are like very like macabre and like obsessed with like death and stuff like that. And they're just like a very weird, they were like the original, like we're not like the other families type of family, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I mean, like- They kind of weren't to be yeah. fair. <laughs> so there's like Gomez and like Morticia and the uh, fucking, I don't know, Uncle Festa and like just characters like oh. that where it's just like, you know, there was just like, it was the weirdest cast of characters. They're, they're human, right? Yes, they're human, but okay. they're but they're so weird and so obsessed in the macabre that they're almost not human. I mean, there I is a character that's also not human called why, why, Thing. But in other in other interpretations of the show, they are actually like- Yeah, why, did I, yeah. why do I think yeah. they're vampires? Yeah. Well, because I think that- in, other, in other versions of story, oh, you know, because yeah. it's a dra- okay. like the, I think, Adam's family is- Yeah, I think it borders on like, are they human or are they just weird humans or are they non-humans trying to live in a human is world? The, is the Adam's family Red public domain? Yeah. <laughs> Can you look? Oh, uh, it was based off of a cartoon, like cartoon character. Oh, a cartoon, okay. Is it, is it public domain? I can't remember if it is. I don't not. know, to be um, honest. But they've done re- a bunch of remakes of uh, like movies from like the 90s Adam's Family oh, yeah. movie yeah, is yeah. fucking hilarious. And I think recently- That's uh, the, Adam, uh, the Adam Sandler one, right? Not, uh, is that an Adam Sandler? Sandler? Adam's Family one? Or is that a Dracula movie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not public domain. Okay, it's, no, not. it's not public what, domain. Yeah. What's the one that Adam Sandler's in? The uh, Adam Sandler animated cartoon? Am I crazy? Am I mixing something? <laughs> I the think I think that's thing. Adam's family. Yeah. <laughs> the Adam family. Yeah. Adam, no, no. Adam Sandler's family, not the Adam's family. <laughs> Let me have a look. I got a thing because I think um, I'm crazy. Yeah, so like wh- what I really enjoyed about the show is that like it because the characters are just so yeah. fucking absurd, yeah. it makes for some really, really unique comedic bits. Right. Um so like for example, like um I don't know, like uh Lurge, for example, is this like almost like Frankenstein's monster type of thing, but he's also the what he's also the butler of the family. Right. And then there's also another character called Thing, which is just a disembodied hand that just crawls around and right. emotes and stuff uh, like that. And there's been so many remakes of it. I think there's going to be a remake of, there's like a new like Netflix, I think TV series based on Wednesday Adams, uh, which is like the, the youngest daughter of Adam's family or uh, something yeah, made I, by, I, what's his I, name? I Adam Sandler, I thought, I, maybe my brain was dumb and thought Adam Sandler was in it because it's the Adam family. Th- yeah, that's uh, what I was about to say. But yeah, there's the two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought we, I thought that was like too obvious yeah. to point out. I think so. that was probably what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, but it's a real, if you want like a classic, like funny, like co- comedic uh, show, then I, yeah. I'd say Adam's family still, like a lot of the episodes, I think it's still really mm. funny. Yeah. Did you, yeah. did you ever watch- Bang a theme too? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, of course. What is it? Da, 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 da. You know it. Oh, everyone, okay, everyone, da, 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 da. oh it. okay, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Did Don't you ever watch the Twilight Zone? Since yeah, that's really good. Uh, yeah, yeah, Twilight Zone I grew up with as well, but like I don't think Twilight Zone was one of those shows where that I would see it every now and then on TV. I right. wouldn't like religiously watch it like Simpsons or Space. Yeah. Did you ever watch that TV show that was like fact or fiction? And where oh, all the that- memes of that that guy going like it's it's a lie I made it up it's it's not true I made it up I lied you know what I'm saying? I think no. so that sounds what? familiar like, <laughs> fuck dude what god damn it what am such a fucking patch <laughs> oh no 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 wait 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 I, I know what you're talking yeah. about the, the guy in like in like yeah, a yeah. smoky room in the, in the smoky room. room no I made it up yeah yes. <laughs> okay no now I know what you're talking about I didn't know I think so I thought what. I didn't know that came from like a TV show. It's uh, uh, Beyond Belief. Beyond Belief. Uh, Jonathan Frakes, Beyond a Belief. Oh, uh, I thought, I don't know, me, I don't know this, why. This I just thought that was like a History Channel show or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a bunch of- And realized you'd forgotten where you parked your car. Ever gone mountain biking? What do you want to be when you grow up? What's the right tip? Have you called a- you've Oh, yes. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, this one's good. This one's good. I like that show. That was really good. Yeah. Mythbusters. I think we spoke about this a uh, little while ago. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I met Adam Savage. I mean, Myth- so Mythbusters is great. Mythbusters is fucking awesome. If you don't know what Mythbusters is, Joey, take it away. Mythbusters, basically Adam and uh, Adam Savage and Jamie Hyman. Uh, they are basically, I think they used to work in like Hollywood as like special effects right. uh, yeah. creators, but they basically have like two guys with really long science backgrounds who basically take common myths and scientifically prove whether it's real or just a myth. Mm. Yeah. Um, really simple concept, yeah. but because they go about it in a scientific way, mm. it's really cool to just see them be like, all right, so there's the myth, for example, that the yeah. um, there's the myth, for example, that like uh, enough balloons can pick up a human body off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So then they go out and go, all right, how many balloons would it actually take yeah. to pick up an average human body yeah. off the ground? And so they would go through all this, or like, you know, another one was like, um, how many layers of uh, uh, of glass could stop a bullet? Yeah, I saw for that. example, yeah. there's also like you know, can sal- salsa dissolve prison bars? Yeah, 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 yeah. just like yeah. stuff, or like or like a, a floss, like a teeth floss. Yeah, can it yeah. cut through a steel bar, for example? So it's like yeah. they basically take common myths or like stuff you see in movies, and they go, is like is that cap or fact? Yeah. It's basically, good. it's it's like uh, you know the the. Pre- predecessor to crazy YouTube engineering channel. Yeah, Basically, honestly. I was, I, I was going to say this like, did science YouTube before science YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Existed, Absolutely. You know? It's very, it's very, uh, it feels very nerdy. Yeah. Like, and it, it feels yes. very, you know, doesn't care if you don't mm. yeah. like the show or you don't like the style. It feels like they just wanted to make the show and make it for them. Yeah. And yeah. make it the way they wanted it and well, blow stuff up. Yeah. Well, it was, it was one of the few shows that managed to make science cool. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when, whenever we think of science engineering, we just like fucking fall asleep. Because like, mm. why why should I give a shit True. about chemistry <laughs> or like Boring. or like you know fucking Sorry, biology <laughs> well, well, or anything I like mean, that? The reason we give about chemistry is because of Breaking Bad. That's yeah. why. But but now oh you're telling me that chemistry can blow things up and set things on fire? Okay, suddenly yeah. I care now. Just okay. like it, like in a lot of uh, in a lot of the episodes, what I really enjoyed is the fact that it was just purely Adam and Jamie just being like, what if. Mm-hmm. this would happen or like have yeah. you ever thought about could this be real like yeah. a, a one that's really good is like um shell shock from grenades how yeah. close like the, it's the uh, the myth of like if there's a grenade about to go off and someone dives on top of it then that will save everybody else yeah and so what they would do is they would like out of ballistics gel they would create a human shaped thing they would put it on top of a grenade they would yeah. put another human some distance away and then they would see if that human if the would unpaid survive. Yeah. dies yeah and it was just funny because it was just an excuse for them to just blow up a bunch of grenades. I mean, it's it's funny because you you started this this off being like, you know what? They did it for the name of science, you know. Yeah. They, no, they, they wanted to blow shit up. No, yeah, they yeah, just wanted to blow like, shit up. Yeah, I was just like talking to the safety third guys. I'm like, I just realized they just find like the most convoluted reasons to find <laughs> to find a reason to blow shit up. You yeah, know, that's true. And that's that's MythBusters yeah. basically. Honestly, and I so like know. Uh, you know, a lot of like I fucking watch the show religiously. Mm-hmm. It was like my favorite thing to watch. It's yeah. a great TV show. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Aged yeah. Very well. Uh, it fantastically has. It well. Has. Yeah. Um, Ed and Eddie fucking goes without saying. Probably one of the best. Best Cartoon Network shows to come out. Awesome. Um, I just love Ed and Eddie a lot. I yeah. love the, um, I forgot the name of the uh, this art style where the, the every character's lines are always moving. <coughs> oh, uh, it's, uh, it's a, like we like a rubber hose. 
No, no, rubber hose is more like Disney, like like oh, like thirties animation. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like it's like a it's like boiling <coughs> boiling lines or something boiling animation yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. I love that the color palette of Ed and Eddie. Oh yeah, is nuts. It's I mean, and like just it's one of those shows that where I feel the original creators were just like, what's human anatomy? Yeah, that doesn't true. exist. Well, tell us about the show, Jerry. What happens in Ed and Eddie? Ed and Eddie is basically just a Cartoon Network show from the nineties where it's just two thousands. Uh, is it two thousands? I thought it was the nineties. Pretty sure it's two thousand. I don't know. It's somewhere around there, though. Early two thousands, right. where it's basically just based in a cul-de-sac in everyday America, and it's just uh, a bunch of kids just fucking doing random shit in the cul-de-sac to try and get jawbreakers. To try and get jawbreakers. So they, they do a bunch of schemes to try and earn money to get jawbreakers. Yeah. To, yeah. To, they love these jawbreakers for some reason, and they'll do anything. Yeah. And it, it, it's great. Every every character is great. The, it's yep. a fun show. The voice acting is so good. Yes, it's aged really well. Really, well. really well. You, the animation style is so good. There's a there's a clip so that good. recently I found on YouTube that I've just been obsessed with again, and it's just this one episode where uh, Eddie, uh, this guy in the middle here, if you don't know, Eddie is like he he dresses up as like a demon, uh, yeah. like character to try and convince Ed, who's the dumb guy, yeah. to do a bunch of weird shit. Mm so that he could like turn him into like a freak to like yeah. earn it a freak show. Yeah. And there's one scene where he's just like, eat your mattress. And then Ed just looks at the bed and he's like, okay. <laughs> and then Ed, Ed Double D, this other guy, Ed comes in and it's just this scene of just Ed just fucking eating this yeah. mattress whole. <laughs> and it's the most like- Kirby before it was Kirby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, good Lord, man. <laughs> it's just eating this mattress. Um, it's just the most absurdest humor ever, but it's yeah. really, really fucking funny. I, like one thing that like, re-remembering Ed, Ed and Eddie makes me realize mm. is that are cartoons as weird now? No. No. Uh, because actually, uh, yeah, I, a little bit. A Just little a different bit? Weird. Different weird. Yeah. Right. Because I feel Ed and Eddie kind of falls into the same genre of cartoons as like, you know, the Ren and, uh, the Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, era, the Ren and Stimpy. Where, where it's like so absurdist to the point where it's almost gross. Well, yeah. the art style can be gross at times. Oh, very yeah, yeah, gross, yeah. yeah. Well, I was just, I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, man, I watched a lot of weird shit as a kid. Oh right? yeah. And I'm this like, era of Cartoon Network had some of the weirdest television programs Yeah, it's like the ever. golden era of Cartoon Network. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like Cow and Chicken was another one where I'm just oh. like, Oh, cow and chicken. This show, Courage the Cowardly, Courage Dog. The Cowardly Dog. I'm like, yeah. these shows are fucking weird. Where like, if you put this on Adult Swim, yeah. it would totally just blend in. Oh, you know? absolutely. And I'm just like, yeah. how did we grow up with these cartoons? <laughs> They're so fucking weird. What? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm like rewatching some scenes of Ed and Eddie. I'm like, how did I not get traumatized by some of the shit I'm <laughs> yeah. seeing right now? Like, Dude, I, yeah. I, I, I would not show my kids Ed and Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a, like an Ed and Eddie friendish kind of group vibe? Uh, yeah, I kind of did. Yeah. Um, I was definitely like the, the Eddie type of character where yeah, I'm yeah. just like, I was just convincing other people to do dumb <laughs> shit. <laughs> That makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. I definitely had a friend who was like Ed. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's just I, like I think, anything I told him to do, he would do. I think everyone, every friend group had an Ed. You but know? that's the thing. That's what I Ed's think was- lovable, That's yeah, why yeah. I think was so good about Ed, Ed, and Eddie was that it was such an absurdist, like completely just like out of the norm type of show, but the characters, fundamentally were characters that you could recognize. Whereas yeah, like yeah, right. there was at least one character in Ed and Eddie where you're like, I have a friend who's like that, or yeah. I'm like that. Amazing um, music as well. Oh, the dude, intro. O opening song, banger. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Best one. So ever. good. Um, do I have to talk about Arthur? Can we I mean, just say it's goaded? Arthur's yeah. goaded. If you don't know what Arthur is, you've watched Arthur. How would That's you even describe Arthur? Fuck, children's TV, but that's so good that an adult could probably enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Like it is literally made for like five year olds. But it's written so well that like, again, like as an adult, you're like, this is not bad. It's, it's so weird because it kind of hides its very adult themes in a very like friendly for children type of way. Like, yeah. I think yeah. it's really, I think Arthur is one of the best shows when it comes to subtle writing. Yeah. Where it's like, before you realize it, this character has been built up to be something that you can yeah. kind of be like, yeah, I, I get what you're going through, bro. There's yeah. some really good episodes. Yeah. I, I remember even when I was like 16, yeah. come back from school, if Arthur was on, I'd watch Arthur. Oh yeah. yeah. I loved Arthur. And still speaking when I was like of 16. banger openings, Dude. my lord. Oh my one god. One of the most legendary. one of the most legendary, legendary. cartoon it openings is ever. Ingrained Honestly. in my mind, Dude. hard etched in. Dude, it, everybody thought yeah. they were Rasta when they were listening to this shit, <laughs> you know. But it's, uh, it's very much a shame that it's gone. You will, uh, oh, you will not be missed, yeah. Arthur. You're a legend in our hearts. It's it's weird because I know I watched so many episodes of Arthur. I don't mm. know, I don't, and I don't know if I was just too young. No, but you I, do, yeah. But I don't like remember 
much of it. It's it's no. it's it's only through memes that I'm like, oh yeah, this kind of happened. Um, wearing the headphones. Yeah, wearing, wearing the headphones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On top of the ears, yeah. The fucking Arthur fist. Yeah, yeah. that's legendary. <laughs> legendary. Now, what, what about that, uh, what was it? It was the, the, that meme of, um, what's the fucking bulldog looking guy? And he's like- Yeah, I, I can't remember. And yeah, he's like, and he puts the, the headphones in and he just like starts tripping out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, love that I love that one. It's so good. Such a really good show. Okay, what the um, fuck is The real? final two ones are very Australian. They look, they look Australian. Yeah. Holy shit. So which one do you want to start with? Pick, pick, pick. Okay. Uh, Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures. Okay, so this was, um, do you know the show Kath and Kim? No. It is like very, like one of the most quintessential Australian sitcom shows. Very, very. We only, we only imported Neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So it was if it was if if Neighbors is like number one, Kath and Kim's like number two. It's right, like right. one of the most beloved shows. Um, I thought about putting that on there, but it, this guy, uh, he's uh, I keep forgetting the guy's name, he, the actor's name, but he's also a comedian. Russell, Russell Coit. No, so Russell Coit is this character's oh, name. Oh. So basically, this is a parody of like a kind of Steve survival, oh. like Steve Owen survival in Australia type of educational show. Right. Mm. Except this guy, whose real name is not Russell Coit, he's an actor. He plays this character called Russell Coit, who's like the most stereotypical, like, Bogan. yeah, I'm yeah. a, you know, I'm a survival expert out yeah. in Australia. And he tries to give, and it's it's just this sketch comedy show where it's Russell Coit just trying to like kind of tell you about like how to, there's like, this is how you build a fire in Australia. Or like, oh, I just found a, 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 a red belly black snake. Here's how you like get rid of it. But it always ends up in the most like horrific ways. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, like there's this one <laughs> scene where he's talking to some indigenous Australian people. Um, and, uh, and, and, and he's kind of like getting them to like, you know, teach them about like how to like pick berries in the wildlife and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. learning from them. But there's this reoccurring joke in, in Russell Coit where every time Russell Coit goes up to someone and gives them a handshake, there's this one clip that replays every single handshake. So it's like, it's just, it's almost like this stock image video of just the close up of the hands right. handshaking, these two white guys handshaking and it plays Every time Russell Coit goes up to a new person and gives them a handshake. So there's this one in the one episode where he's talking to these like indigenous Australians and he's going up to handshake all of them. Yeah. Every time he goes into handshake, it just cuts to two white guys handshaking. <laughs> Every, and it's like, it's this show is like- this is, That sounds like a meme. Yeah, you know? it, it, oh, it is, it dude, like yeah. if people go back- So like adults or- Oh, both. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, like it's, there were some there were some instances where like it was very like adult oriented where like he would actually get hurt in the show, oh, wow. yeah. but in like a comedic kind of way. But it was just so incredibly funny because it's one of the most perfect examples of just really subtle comedy mm -hmm. in like sketch comedy shows. Right. I don't know how well it has aged today. Uh, it might be, you know, because I think this is from like the late nineties, I think early nineties. Oh, okay. Even. Good so, age poorly. Yeah, yeah. So some- A, lo a lot of comedies have aged poorly A lot of time. comedies have aged poorly yeah. from that time. Yeah. Um, and another uh, comedy that might have aged poorly from that time is this one. Uh, it's called Fat Pizza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a show when, okay, when okay. we, so uh, Kevin, right? Our boy, Kevin, Kevin Pankin. Yeah. We fucking bonded over the show again the other day when we were, when we were in Australia, because right. this is one of those shows where I think everyone in our age group watched this show. All right. Um, so basically like you guys were talking about peep show being like the peak of like British cringe comedy. Yeah. This is probably the Australian equivalent to it. Right. Okay. 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 So it's this show about uh, this, this guy, Paulie, uh, who is this like uh, Italian Australian immigrant? Um, and he, it's basically about his character. He's like a pizza delivery guy, okay. and he works at this like really fucking sketch pizza shop right. in this really sketch neighborhood of Australia. Oh. Um, and it's basically just like the daily shenanigans that he gets up to, where he has to deal with like these like fucking ho horrendous like bogan customers mm -hmm. and like uh, because uh, Paul Paulie the, this actor's name I, th I think his actual real name is Paul as well mm -hmm. right um, and uh, all of the cast members are like you know uh, Italian immigrants in Australia or like uh, like Lebanese immigrants in Australia and it's just like a lot of the it's 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 very much revolved around like kind of the European and uh, Middle Eastern immigrants who migrated to Australia oh. so uh, a lot of that kind of comedy exists but you don't have to be part of that mm -hmm. race to understand that comedy because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so ingrained in Australian comedy. Oh. Um, there's a really famous actress now in Hollywood, uh, Rebel Wilson, I think her name is. Yeah. She started off in this show. Wow. Oh, which one's okay. Rebel Wilson? Rebel Wilson, she's not in this picture. Oh, oh no, there she's right there. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. she she started off. This was like the show that made her famous oh, wow. in, in Australia. She wow, played this character yeah. called Tula, who is this like fucking obese like girl who like keeps ordering pizzas right. from, from this one pizza I see, shop. I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh and and it's just like it's it's really fucking difficult to explain. But basically it's Hearing you guys talk about Peep Show mm. is basically the Australian equivalent to that. A lot of cringe. Take a lot of cringe. Okay, okay great, good. great. I'm, I'm already interested. I'm a lot I'm of, if you want, I, if, if you, you want to experience, cringe, no yeah, yeah, it's incredibly cringe. It can be incredibly offensive at times, but yeah. also really, really funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my Australian brothers, I know you get, you guys get your sarcasm, your cringe humor. Oh you know, yeah. That's, that's why, like. I would be very interested to watch this. Yeah, I fucking love. I feel show. this is the perfect window into what mm. Australian like, you know, yeah. comedy and like civilization is kind of like. Civilization. <laughs> because <laughs> because to be a, fair, we live in a civilization. Because to be fair, I have been to some places in like kind of outer Australia mm -hmm. yeah. where it gives off this vibe. Okay, like it's, these are like they're exaggerations. I think of people that exist in real life. Yeah, yeah. Is right. is there a particular scene that? Uh, Sticks out to oh, you. Oh fuck! I don't know. So like, uh, like there's this one scene where like, uh, Paulie gets like, uh, he has like this uh friend, this Lebanese friend, yeah. uh, called Habib, um, and he like pisses off Habib for doing something, and then Habib's just like, "Don't fucking get in my way, bro! I'm gonna call up all my cousins." And then he's just like, well, "How many cousins do you have here?" And then five minutes later, there's just like. Over the hill, there's just these like 40 cars just <laughs> full of these Lebanese dudes that just like rock up to the pizza shop and just start beating the shit out of Pauly. <laughs> and, the the and, <laughs> and then and then Habib, he he's like this character, he plays like this like tip, stereotypical like Lebanese Australian guy. So uh, every yeah. time he takes off his shirt, it's just like completely just like full of hair. Like you can't see any of his skin at all. And it's just like kind of plays into those stereotypes. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. not in like a way where it's like racist, if that, that makes fine. sense. Right, right. It's just like a lot of of like just very, you know, tongue in cheek, like slapstick comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good, that's right? very Australian. All right. Um, and yeah, that's uh, my, Not I don't watch yeah. TV. Th no, how, hard, how hard was it to make this? To be fair, three? thinking about it now, I would probably replace maybe like, uh, cause I completely forgot about Top Gear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I mean, I could have put that. I could have put that in as and well. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? I, I watch so much fucking Top Gear. So like, I would probably replace like one of these yeah. Top Gear. Yeah, but I mean, we're, 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 we're yeah. Top Gear now. We just right, try guys? to. We try to. Yeah. We, yeah. Just, we, we just try hard. We are the we just yeah, we're bottom hard. gear. <laughs> we're bottom gear. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, yeah. all right. This episode is sponsored by Babbel. Now that the world is opening up again, I plan to travel to a lot of different countries and explore the world. And thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. So it's considering that a part of me is uh, also German as well. My grandfather is German. I wanted to learn a little bit of German before I actually go to visit family in Germany. And Babbel was a really great app for that. Babbel's 15 minute lessons are the perfect way to learn a new mm. language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plannings, but Babbel's lessons were created by over a mm. hundred language experts, Damn, guys. Wow. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and of course, German. Hell yeah. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. But guys, right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. Woo! That's six months for the price of free. Damn. Just go to babbel.com and use promo code TRASH. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code TRASH. Back to the episode. Okay, I was wrong. Ed and Eddie is 1999. Oh, fuck, is fuck you. I was right. All right. All Your right. list gone. I already see that a bunch of these I could have put on mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, we watch the same popular TV shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, so there's a couple I don't know. Okay, so starting you from- You don't know some? What? <laughs> these, are, these are so famous. These are literally some of the most popular what's shows. This? Yeah. What's this one? This is Peep Show. show again. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Except, except I just okay. framed it right this time. Okay, okay so so I guess we don't need to talk about Peep Show. Yeah, but, we don't need to talk about Peep Show. So uh, you want to name the other shows? Always Sunny, Game of Thrones, Peep Show, The Good Place, uh, the original Justice League cartoon, yep. Shinobu, uh, Shinobu, sorry, 
Battlestar Galactica, Black Mirror, and Doctor Who. I am very surprised by Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. What, hold up, what? Okay, okay. Explain. Why, 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 why Battlestar Galactica? You've never mentioned an interest in like sci-fi stuff. <laughs> Actually, I, I realized it when uh, making this list, but I really fucking love sci-fi TV shows. What the fuck? <laughs> You've never talked yeah, about sci-fi. Yeah, why have you never like hinted at that? What do you mean? I, okay. This is the music it's, three it's, by three all over is, again. Is it because that I only talk about isekai anime? Yes. You literally have never given inclination that you give a fuck about I would take you more seriously if you stopped talking about you isekai. Did, you didn't talk about Dune. <laughs> huh? You didn't talk about Dune much. Yeah. I fucking love Dune. Dune Dune's great. Dude, Dune's fucking great. <laughs> no, I, I think no, it's no. weird. I think it's weird, right? Because I fucking love sci uh, sci-fi, but I just don't like Star Wars in terms and that's like that's, right. like that's like that's like what everyone like fucking too. talks like about, Wars. you know? Um So yeah, walk is um Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Battlestar yeah, Galactica. That's one of the few sci-fi shows. Oh, sorry, one of the few uh, television shows that I actually got to complete when I was in university. So this, mm -hmm. I, it's been a while since I watched Battlestar Galactica, but I enjoyed the journey, the journey from start to end. Basically, if you want a synopsis of the basic plot of Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> it's a sci-fi it show. Gets deep. <laughs> it's a space opera. Yeah. Uh, humans have colonized the galaxy and there are like 13 colonies or some shit like that. And then they also built AIs, right? Mm. They also built AI robots. And of course the AIs had an uprising where the AIs, I, I believe they destroyed 12 of the 13 colonies, right? Yeah. And the one remaining surviving group of humans, they tried to find the last mythical 13th colony, which is da -da -dun, Earth. <gasps> you know, damn, spoilers. Us, damn, dude. damn. But uh, what makes it interesting is, of course, th these are like the last 50 or 60,000 humans that are just traveling through space trying to find this last colony. Mm. Uh, but of course, they're on the run from the robots, which is like, I think, I believe they're called Cylons. Mm. Um, but the twist is that the robots, the Cylons, are so well programmed. Mm that there are some Cylons that have invaded this fleet, mm, right, of mm. humans, but they're so well programmed that they don't even know that they're like a sleeper agent, right? So, mm. and they look and sound and act exactly like humans do, and there's no mm. real way to detect them. So basically- it's Real Blade Runner shit. Huh? That's yeah, some real yeah. Blade Runner shit. Yeah, so, ba cool. so basically it's just fucking sci-fi among us, you know? <laughs> among <laughs> us is sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess it is. So it's just you, Among Us. You know, you, you know what? Among Us is just Battlestar Galactica with, with, with the suits on, okay? How many seasons? It's Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica, okay. the game. <laughs> okay, this is what I liked about Battlestar Galactica. I believe mm. it's only four seasons. And it, and it finished it up? Yes, it's all finished. It's a complete story. Oh. Um, but what I found really, what, one, that's the one thing I really, really liked because that's yeah. why I've rarely, rarely finished TV shows. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, is that even though they have this, you know, tension between like, oh, who's who's a human, who's a Cylon and everything like that. Mm -hmm. What I really liked about the show is how it took this one group of colonies and really explored some really interesting ideas about what would happen if you try to govern these group of people, mm -hmm. right? So basically they kind of created a mini nation, right? And they 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 draw you in with like the space battles yeah. and just the pew, pew, pew and all that stuff like that. But then what's, <laughs> yeah, pew, 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 pew. yeah, exactly. But what kept me interested, interested was in fact the politics, the mm. politics behind behind the spaceship, the space, this last space colony and like what happened between how you govern mm. all of the humans and everything like that. And, and I found that way more interesting than the pew 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 and like mm. the Among Us mm. part of the uh, part of the show. I mean, visuals can only take you so far. Us. Huh? Visuals can only take you so far. Visuals can only yeah, take you course, so far. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, it is just one of the best sci-fi shows I've okay. seen. Question then, did you enjoy Firefly? I have not seen Firefly. Actually. Okay, because I feel from if you liked Battlestar Galactic, I think you'd really like. Firefly. I th like. All have I have you seen Firefly? Yeah. I'm okay. Seeing, all I know is that it didn't finish. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, well, they made a movie called Serenity afterwards, which was supposed to be like the, the is the, that really the, the sequel? Is that really that like a sequel to it though? No, because no. I have seen Serenity and yeah. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. Is... It's not a sequel. What, what, okay, what is Firefly about? Because all I know is like a space spaghetti western or something like that. Pretty much. I'm trying to also remember what I it was about. Know. To yeah. be honest. 
watch it and find I out. I just remember it being really good. Because <laughs> like, I, Fireflies is that one show that every person tells you to watch. If yeah, you every like every sci-fi TV fan will be like, Firefly best, yeah, Firefly yeah. best. And I'm like, mm. it, but it was like by Joss Whedon, is that a good thing or a bad thing anymore? <laughs> I don't know, you know, like it's that thing, you know, kind, kind, kind of puts me off anyway. But I guess next. Okay, while we're on uh, sci-fi then, Doctor Who. Okay. <laughs> Okay, because me seeing that immediately, I was like, holy shit, well, I, I forgot this show existed. I see you specifically- right. just, uh, you, you picked the best one as well, to be fair. Chose David Tennant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the chose, best, he was the best one. Chose, chose David Tennant, but more broadly, Doctor Who in the Russell T. Davis era, okay? Yes. So basically, I'm okay. Th the thing about Doctor Who fans is a lot of them are just fucking insufferable, <laughs> right? They're they're like the they're like the modern Star Trek fans of old, you know. I think same thing can be said for a lot of these shows. To be <laughs> That's <honest>. true. <laughs> that is true, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if a show's good in some way, in yeah. long running, it gets insufferable. Fans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but like that's why like I rarely talk about Doctor Who. Mm. But like I, it's a good show. It's a really really good really fucking show, and I fucking. This, I, I said Battlestar Galactica is one of the best sci-fi shows I've seen. Doctor Who is the best sci-fi show I've seen. Oh. It's, it, it is- I, I, I'll agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, in, in terms of like TV shows, yeah. it is by far the show that tackles the most weirdest ideas mm. you can ever imagine. And it has like, what I love about Doctor Who is that every episode is like kind of self-contained, right? Every yeah. episode tackles a different idea, a different time period, a different place in space mm. and time, right? That's what that's what makes it so fucking interesting. But then it has like an overarching plot as well that mm. you don't necessarily need to watch the beginning of Doctor Who to appreciate. Oh, I have, well, not, I have not seen yeah, the beginning yeah. of Doctor Who. You, you can't because they, no one knows where the episodes are because the BBC dumped all the episodes. <laughs> oh, really? Well, because back in the day, they thought, why the fuck are we going to archive this stuff? So they oh, just shit. threw it away. So it's, I think a bunch of the original, 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 original Doctor Who episodes are on. You can't right. watch them. It's like lost media now. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. And, and it's probably never going to be found. Shit. Yeah. And like, to me, like Doctor Who, like David Tennant's obviously my doctor, but I all, I really, really- <laughs> I know he's, doctor. he's my doctor. God, I sound like such a Doctor yeah, Who fan. Like, I, I, he's I, my doctor. Who's, who's I, your Doctor Who stand? I yeah. always liked Doctor Who when I watched it, mm. yeah. but I just never got into it. Like I would watch episodes here and there, you know, yeah. maybe the Christmas special episodes. Yeah, there was yeah, yeah. Specials. I think I started I, with you know, like, because really uh, David Tennant was the 10th season. Yeah. Um. And I think I started on like season eight or season nine. I don't remember is which this, one. Is this after now. like the who was the doctor? I don't remember. Whoever it was before, was it, uh, bless you. Whoever was, it was, was it before, Chris, Christopher Eccleston. I would know his face if I saw it. But uh, it was whoever it was. was it, in, was it, it was whoever modern. before it was before David Tennant. Okay, that was Christopher Eccleston. Okay, okay. It was yeah. uh, that was the first one I watched where I'm like, oh, what is this show? And then I started yeah. getting into it. And then David Tennant, Doctor Who, like season ten, where it was yeah. just like, holy shit. Yeah, he's great. He's like, just an amazing actor. Yeah, yeah like, like the Christopher Eccleston, also amazing actor as well. I and then it was like Matt Smith afterwards. Matt right? Smith, yeah. which is like, he wasn't a bad Doctor. I just feel like he's they, a lot of people's favorite. Like he is a lot. I of think the episodes favorite. for a, I, a season eleven were a bit boring though. Yeah, I, I just think that it wasn't Matt Smith's fault. It, it was like Stephen Moffat's fault. Was it Stephen Moffat? I think it's Stephen Moffat. I don't know. Um, Which season was the Weeping God Angels? left the BBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when I stopped Doctor watching Doctor Who once I left the BBC, okay? <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah. Bad, he bad no <laughs> loyalty to it anyway. The, we, the Weeping Angels episode is by far my favorite. Yeah. Because that is probably the most unnerving episode of television Cause, ever. Because like the, the real beauty of Doctor Who is yeah. I, remember, I remember getting into Doctor Who through Christopher Eccleston. Mm. And that was like when the Russell T Davis era started. Um, and I remember watching like a few episodes and I was like, this shit, what, what the, this shit, look at the monsters, man. Like yeah. that's, that's literally, this is literally the worst CGI I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Some of the CGI would make fucking some of the anime CGI. It would, it would make Berserk 2017 look like fucking God tier, man. That's how bad the CGI was. Yeah. And I'm like, this is absolute garbage. Why yeah. does everyone hype up Doctor Who? But then, I just like, you just keep watching and somehow the writing is so compelling that mm. it, it dances the perfect line between campiness and, you know, just epicness. Great television. You know, and just great, it's just great television mm. because it's, it's something where if you just step out for a minute and just look at it, out of context, look at like something like the Daleks or something. And I'm just like, and you're just like, why uh, Why is this guy pointing a, a light at a talking washing machine? What's, Exterminate. Why, why, why has it got a fucking suction cup? It does look fucking shit. It's it looks fucking weird. ridiculous, yeah. right? But that just shows how fucking good the writing mm. is and mm. the actors are of this like Doctor Who world, right? Mm. 
and yeah. that yeah there's just a, there's just a certain magic where technically it is also a children's show but it turns everyone who watches it into a child oh if, yeah, yeah where it turns you it gives it turns you back into that point in life where you didn't question things too much you just mm. saw something cool on tv and you're yeah. just like wow that's 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 scary you yeah. know and yeah Man, oh, they, used, they used to make us always go to the fucking Doctor Who Museum in Cardiff. Yeah, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, because I a lot, a lot of uh, Doctor Who is shot in Wales. Oh, really? So, and in Cardiff, they have a ton of like, I think yeah, it's a big museum or something. Yeah. I remember, oh my god, my school used to drag me, and I was like, I fucking hate this. I don't like <laughs> yeah. Doctor Who. I, I also yeah. thought it was a Family of, Guy museum. I, I also thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also thought it was really genius the writing that they incorporated. I guess for the TV show, where like at the end of each season, like when the Doctor dies quote unquote mm -hmm. like he's just like no he doesn't die it's just another version of him dies yeah, and myself. that's just like a great way to just be like all right next season who, who wants to be the doctor yeah, yeah. who wants to be the doctor well, I, I also think it's a good way to like reset yeah to one freshen up and mm. just resets the ongoing story because the thing is even though there's like one there's one massive ongoing story which is like the doctor tries to find his home planet mm -hmm. you know but then every iteration of doctor who has their own kind of self-contained story with mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. characters their their own side characters within that own self-contained mm. story. Uh, I just think, uh, I just think, uh, yeah, David Tennant. David Tennant's amazing. David Tennant's oh, fucking so amazing. I mean, he's just an amazing actor. And Jessica Jones, he's insane. Fucking hell, yeah. like, I'm, has he been in more roles aside from Doctor Who and Jessica Jones? I think he does a lot of theater. Yeah. Mm. So I think he, he doesn't do as much TV. I think he's theater yeah. trained, right? Originally. Yeah, he is. Oh, he so, definitely is. He's, yeah. he, I think he, I think he does a lot of theater. Yeah, not yeah. Um, as much on the side of mm, uh, yeah. TV, which is a shame, really, because he's really good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, Doctor Who. It's which one would you like to talk about next, Carl? Let's talk about Game of Thrones. Okay. I, okay. I, want, I, I, want, I wanted to talk about that first. Right? Okay. Going, going off the Breaking Bad. <laughs> okay. Game uh, of Thrones. Go, uh... go, go, going off the Breaking Bad point. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is definitely going to be a hot take. <laughs> I thought season eight was the best. <laughs> I what prefer, are you gonna say? I prefer the later seasons of Game of Thrones. Fuck off, God! I gen no. Genuinely, God. You, okay, genuinely. Actually, do you know how bad it, I, I'll, that I'll, is? I'll, I, I was tired. Right, we've been filming all day. That woke me the fuck up. God, what the I will, fuck I, do you God, mean, God? I will tell you how bad of a take that was. I haven't seen a single episode of Game of Thrones, and I know that was a bad God, take. That is, that is no. That's how I know no. how much of a bad take that was. Like, it's like I want the one written by uh, the people who didn't read write, read the book, and I want Ed Sheeran in it, and I want people who think. Wait, Ed Sheeran was in it? Yeah, Ed Sheeran was in an episode. Like, it is, it is just bad. Oh my God. It's... What do you like about that? Why? Explain yourself. Okay, okay. You're on trial right now. Okay, I, I'm on trial right now. Like I said, like I said about Breaking Bad, it felt okay, like- Tell me the season it got good first and then tell me why. Um, I mean, I mean, I think it was always good. Okay, when right? they, it, when it was they, always good, but it just got when better. I Which, really, yeah. When I really got invested was around season six. My <gasps> favorite season was about season seven. Uh, I mean, Wait, isn't season, season seven the one season where like all, everyone got pissed off? No, 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 that's season eight. Oh, that's season eight. And yeah. even, season even, seven, even I'm like, seven, okay, seven. season eight. Okay, that was, that was, that was- Season that was, seven that was, sharks. That was a little blunder. That was, that was a little blunder right there, all right? But I, I okay, because here's the thing, right? Going back to my Breaking Bad analogy, I, I know I got the, the entire world watching me right now. <laughs> I have got the entire fucking world watching me right now. And then people, of, people will wonder, man, yeah. why is the subreddit spiking all of a sudden? <laughs> Just, After this episode just, goes like, live, you just hear I can, boom. I can, I can understand the Breaking Bad take, but this one feels irredeemable. Yeah. I can't wait to read the comments on this episode. Okay. Go on. Like I said, mm -hmm. Game of Thrones seasons one to four is almost perfect television. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. fucking fantastic. Yeah. Characters are well written, well defined. Mm -hmm. The world building mm -hmm. is amazing and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, seasons one to four, I didn't really have any emotional attachment to it's anything. It's literally George R. R. Martin's baby at that point. Yeah. That's he's he did everything at that point. No, I no, no I, I agree. So how do you how do you what how do you get more attached when fucking HBO takes over with their generic writers? Because one thing that I fucking love, one aspect I love in any media is when you have different kind of different kind of aspects and cultures clashing together, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like why I really I'm invested in the MCU where you have, you know, wizards and superheroes and okay. now, you know, fucking cosmic god people all existing within the same universe. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of that's because that's what drew me into Game of Thrones originally. And what I fucking my favorite parts of Game of Thrones was in the later seasons when you finally saw this 
these different worlds that have been built up in seasons one, two, and three, and four, and stuff like that, you finally saw all these worlds kind of colliding in together and having some really, really cool moments. Is the writing as good? Fuck no, okay? I will fully admit the writing is not as good, but was it fucking badass seeing the Dothraki riding over a hill with a fucking dragon, like fucking burning the Lannisters? Hell yeah, that was bad fucking ass. And I will like I, defend that shit, I, all right? I think it, it it built it up so well and then just fucking unraveled the coil and then yeah. just threw a bunch of cool battles at us to distract our pretty mm. little brain. <laughs> I think it it squandered everything it built up. I, th I think it was about politics and then it suddenly became about Ed Sheeran and shitty battles and just oh, yeah. rushing it. No, I will totally agree. It, it was... Se just, no. Seasons, <laughs> it, Game of Thrones was two completely different shows. I, I mean, that, that's I, I fully admit it was two completely different shows. Mm. And technically, I should, out of like every bone in my body, <laughs> think that the first four seasons are the better ones. But I, I'm following my heart, and my heart says, "You cool dragons for burning stuff. Ooh, look at the dragons burning the ice zombies. Isn't that so cool?" <laughs> God, if you want to. Isekai gone. Just go watch the <laughs> fucking Isekai, right? Yes, okay. Yes, Get okay. Get the fuck out of here with this. This shit take. Awful. <laughs> Actually, shit take. When do you, okay, when do you think Game of Thrones got bad? Season five. You? Season five. Yeah, season five is where it started faltering. What, what, what was, what was, what happened in season five again? I felt like season da -da -da. five. No, I, I can't remember exactly, but okay. I do remember, because I'd been watching Game of Thrones weekly since season three. Season three was amazing. Season mm. four was just fucking God tier. Yeah, one of the most iconic moments in the series. Uh, yeah. Just it was like, like hitting season four, season three, season four as well. Oh. Had the one fight between the two people. Oh, it was very memorable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love how he just fully understood. You know, you yeah, know, yeah, you yeah. know. It's that better. scene. Um, I remember that scene actually gave me PTSD. Like, what? Yeah. How? Seeing a character, and this happens a lot, by the way, but there's this one particular scene where you saw a character that you really liked mm. and you got emotionally attached to, seeing them like get killed off in such a gruesome way. Mm. It just actually gave me like an emotional, like guttural reaction. Yeah, just, me too. Yeah. Mm. And it was- Isn't that a good thing though? It was yeah. horrible. No, no, that's, no, that's why it's good though. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That's it managed to get good. that emotion out of you. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It was Simpsons great. Simpsons ain't gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. There and are a couple of characters who died in the Simpsons where I'm just like, what the fuck? And then it doesn't fucking do it again. Yeah. And then like, you know, end of season three as well. What happened at the end of oh season three? Role, one of the most famous as One of the most iconic TV moments of all time. Yes. <laughs> I you know, know, you know, I you know, don't. You know, you've heard of it. I don't. You yes. know, you have heard of it. Yes. I, I dead ass don't know anything about no, Game I know of you don't, but like, you The only thing it. I know about Game of Thrones is it's Lord of the Rings with tits. Yeah. Oh, like, what? like <laughs> that's what people have told me. Yeah, like people are dumb. Yeah. Like I said. I'm like, you, you sold me. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, perfect television, but no, cool I, dragons okay, well, and stuff, okay. man. Right, what is next on your list? I'm not. I'm not entertaining this buffoonery anymore. <laughs> what, uh, what what's, okay, what's the good place? I don't know. I don't know. The if good place. Oh, is a the recent good one place Netflix, is right? a pretty recent one. I feel like I've seen this. You most, uh, if you've gone on Netflix, you've seen this. Yeah, yeah. 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 They this, pushed it down everyone's throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is this is a Netflix show. Again, only four seasons. Um, it passes itself off as a comedy. Mm -hmm. but I don't really think it's a comedy. Mm. So the whole premise of The Good Place is, uh, you know, The Good Place is an analogy for heaven, of course. Okay, mm. so all of these people have died and gone to heaven, except for Kristen Bell, who uh, is the main character in The Good Place. Mm. Uh, she wakes up in heaven. Right. But when they tell her, like when they talk about her life story and, and identity and the person she was and everything she did on earth, she realizes that she's up in heaven by mistake. Okay. And she, the whole premise initially is her trying to convince everyone that yes, she is this person who they all believe her to be. And uh, she is a good person that belongs in heaven, mm. right? Uh, and that's, that's, that's how the premise of the story, you know, starts off and mm. honestly, like I, The Good Place started off as a show that was just, you know, I just put on in the background as background noise. Yeah. I was like, this isn't bad, but this is like good enough where I'm like, I can have it on in the background just as white noise to mm. be like, oh, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's, it's a, I like the concept of like them going up to heaven and everything like that. It's, mm. It was like a nice little chemistry between all the characters and everything like that. It was okay. Mm. Um, and then without spoiling what happens, 
a big twist happens at the end of the first season that I like. I did not know that it was going to mm. be that kind of show, mm. where it turned the good place in, into just like a kind of like wacky sitcom comedy. Into these characters have a motive and they're going to try and to achieve something and they have an end goal. Mm. And you get to see not only the the character progression, but it kind of just becomes an entire adventure. It's right. kind of like Bojack, right? Like lulls you in with the funny he animals yeah. and then just hits you with the depression. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Right, right, but yeah. yeah, one one thing I fucking loved about The Good Place is one, like it is a whole complete story, right? Mm. When when you th when you think of most sitcoms, sitcoms don't really have stories. That's, you know what I mean? Mm. Sitcoms are just, okay, you know, you're- Self-contained. It's 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 kind of like, oh, which character's gonna get with which character? Oh, is, <laughs> is Rachel gonna get with Ross? Oh, if Rachel got with Ross, God. by the way, end of friends, bye-bye. I really hope that wasn't going to, I hope nobody cared fair, about I, that spoiler. To be fair, I was close to putting friends on my list. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good show. <laughs> but, the but the point is there isn't really an ongoing story story yeah, with it. Yeah. This one had comedic moments, right? But what it, what what really shines in my eyes is the ongoing story. And within this ongoing story, it tackles so many issues about the afterlife, about mm. religion, about morals. And mm. it's one of those shows where you get you get in on the laughs and you know, you say Bojack was about depression. I was surprised you didn't put Bojack on, by the way. I thought I like you Bojack, would. but- I, yeah. I thought yeah. someone would put Bojack. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, you know, I feel like you could, everything's been said about it. Yeah. Yeah. But like The Good Place is one of those shows where you end and it's just like such a, it leaves you with like such a warm feeling where it, it feels like- it's wholesome. Yeah, it's it's it's. You. I've watched it through osmosis. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not just it's not just wholesome, but it gives you like a good life message at the end of it, and you feel right. like, damn, you know, get. <laughs> so the opposite of Bojack. The literal, the literal yeah, yeah, opposite yeah, of yeah. Bojack. <laughs> <laughs> there are two sides of the coin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> where you know, it you you leave the end of good place, and I've never just like do, do, I've do, I've never do, cried do, do over you it. Leave in a good. Good place. Do I believe in a good do, place? Do you, do you, you leave, leave in a good place? Good do you place. leave in a good place? Well, I won't spoil what, oh, the, oh, what the ending of good place oh, okay, is. Okay. Thank you. But uh, but you know it's I've I've it's they all rare. Go to hell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare that I cry over a okay. sitcom. Okay. okay. Oh, but right. the sick the good place is the only comedy that's ever made me cry at the end of it. Just because oh. seeing these characters come to the end of their journey, their adventure, and just seeing how each character story ended was just so gratifying. And okay. I was just genuinely yeah. happy for everyone in the story. Mm. Fuck Amazing yeah. fucking show. All right. uh, just season one, just wait till the end of season one. Uh, yeah. What do you want to talk about next? Uh, Let's do Black Mirror. Yeah. Black Mirror. Okay. Why Black Mirror? Why Black Mirror? Because- you, Okay, okay before, before we start talking about Black yeah. Mirror, do you think if let's say, uh, for example, like yeah. sure, like Game of Thrones has th three banger seasons, and like three dog shit seasons that yeah. it kind of levels it out. Cause like Black Mirror is that. Well, I actually prefer the later seasons. Fuck. I'm, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was about to go bald <laughs> from the rage. It's great. Cause I have bad enough takes that, that that would be actually believable. No. I would believe if you said that. <laughs> no, like, okay. The, 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 the British ones are good. <laughs> when, it was, when it was in our control, it was amazing. Three yeah. was actually pretty good as well. I yeah, will say three, 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 was, three, three was, was I think good. I only watched up until three. Well, I mean, season one and two, I mean, season two is just- Oh, season two yeah, is incredible. Season two fucking is fucking yeah. fantastic. White Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, season one and two and half of the season three is like, that, that's all the Black Mirror that exists in mm, my mind. Mm. But to me, Black Mirror is, everything that I look for in a TV show. Mm. And I think part of that, part of that is because I just like how much I respect the original creator of Black Mirror. Yeah, we know you, yeah. yeah Charlie Brooker. We love Charlie Brooker. Yeah, <laughs> one of my biggest influences of all time. Mm. Seeing him, seeing him go from like a TV show where he basically does what I do and review movies and mm. events and stuff like that. Going to see him do Black Mirror was just such a- I actually didn't know it was by him. Huh? I actually didn't know it was by Charlie Brooker. You didn't, you didn't no. know. Yeah, that, now you know. Yeah, now I know. Now you know. He's just incredibly fucking talented. Mm. Um, and just seeing the fucking wild ass ideas that Black Mirror had yeah. in season one and two and three. I mean, it kind of just, it, it so like accurate that it kind of mirrors a lot of things that have happened post the uh, oh, yeah. post post release, right? There's a reason why. 
like Black Mirror is almost like in our vocabulary with explaining like tech that scares us. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Everything is described and it's fucking annoying, but anything that is scary in tech, oh, that's very Black Mirror. It's, it's yeah. one of the most like perfect commentaries, I think, yeah. of this generation. Basically, especially. it's yeah. it's the per it's such a perfect meta commentary on just the world in general oh, as yeah. it is now. Yeah. I use meta right this time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know what else I can say about it. I, it's, it's, I, I feel like anything to meant like if tech that scares you, that should be it. Watch it. Don't yeah. don't look anything up. Do not yeah. watch anything. Just go into it as just blind go as you into can. it. You'll have a great time. Yeah, because if I didn't put Black Mirror on, it's like I. I I I think Charlie Brooker took such inspiration from Twilight Zone, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the only other like goat anthology series yeah. that I can think of. Goat that's anthology. Goat, <laughs> goat anthology. I love goats. I goat goat, goat anthology. <laughs> Did I use goats right there? <laughs> goat anthology. That makes sense. Yeah, because like I, it's I I actually really really fucking love anthology series. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When it's done right, like I love yeah. Death and Robots. When it's love, death and, oh, robots. love death and Robots. Oh, fucking fuck fucking fantastic. Can we should have put Love Death. Can, and can, robots can we put Love? Can we talk about Love Death and Robots for a bit? Oh, because love, death and you so need good. to watch Love. Death and Robots. I it's think we actually spoke about it on a podcast not too long ago. About Did we? Yeah, we definitely recommended it. Because it's so, because uh, we all watched season three. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel or like- watch season, Yeah, I feel like- Me and Joe did. watched season three and we yeah. spoke about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've talked about too much TV. <laughs> no, I mean, Love, Death and Robots season three, banger season one, banger season two, you know. Yeah, has has its sparks. Yeah, yeah. Season three is really fun. Season good. three is great. I yeah, like season one yeah. Well. I just love seeing the the thing. The thing I love about anthology series is just seeing so many different ideas. Like, ideas it's experimental. Mm, put mm, into right. one. It's so experimental. You know, this is literally the opposite of a show like you know Breaking Bad. You mm, know, where no. it's just like this is just so many different ideas that are packed into different shows, and it doesn't need to be a ten out of ten banger every time. Sometimes you have like a little bit of a lull. But what I what I appreciate always in anthology series is that someone has something to say and. Have, yeah, it's like, always fresh. Yeah, and they have yeah. one chance to say it, and yep. so it's it's always like it's always interesting mm. to mm. me, especially when they have like uh, when they have like different directors or different cinematographers for episodes. Yeah. You get like, a completely unique feel to each one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. yeah, exactly. And, I mean, like Black Mirror has some really iconic episodes that I think are like must watches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like White Christmas being one of White them. White Christmas, just amazing. Yeah, uh, I, uh, the I, fucking uh, my favorite episode of Black Mirror is probably like the American Idol parody. One the oh that, oh that was in season two, I believe. Yeah. Fuck, I forgot the name of that episode. God I damn, forgot I forgot the name of the episode. It's good. But I, I, I like that one as well with like the wife who like gets the, uh, the husband eyes. AI. Yeah. Oh no, she gets the dead husband, and because the husband dies, she got a, a yeah. husband like doll. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That gets her like memories and beauty. And he like creepy. slowly learns yeah. like the so past creepy. memories. Yeah, that one's creepy. Bro, that's, oh, that's I, I, I can see Japan doing that. Yeah. <laughs> is, 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 is that scary? Is that no, scary no, that no, I no, see no, Japan no, doing no, that? No, absolutely, absolutely. That's so Black Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sex toys be like. So, so you have three left which one do you want to talk about all right let's go with always sunny first mm. i mean uh, the go literally the go actually yeah. the go the, i feel like sunny is like the most american comedy sitcom and yeah british and peep show is the most british yeah yeah, yeah comedy exactly. sitcom. definitely oh you wouldn't say big bang theory connor you wouldn't no say big bang theory you wouldn't no. say how i met your mom no. <laughs> no. malcolm in the middle no. <laughs> well i i, I realized like watching things like always sunny and uh, peep show and everything like that. Maybe I just like to see awful people do awful things. Oh, 100%. It's just mm, like, are oh, awful people just funny? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that, that's essentially what like peep show is, to, not to boil it down and, and really yeah. like dilute it, but like, yeah, it's the same awful people, but just British version. Mm. Yeah, yeah, doing, exactly. Living their British life. And it's just like a lot of, a lot of let's say peep show storylines, I could easily see happening in Always yeah, Sunny, yeah, but yeah. just mm. like the the dynamic would be completely different. Oh, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. Where Always Sunny again is just, uh, the five most awful people in this world just doing awful things and having <laughs> awful fucking ideas and trying to like yeah. win in this world. It's one of the funniest sitcoms and long running for a reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only reason I think it's kind of hard to get into is the first season, first four seasons yeah. are in like a four by three aspect ratio and look a bit weird. Yeah. Oh really? I don't know why. Also, I, th I think the first oh. season is good, but the second season is when they introduced Danny DeVito. Second season wins. Good, and good. and mm. that's when it goes from a good show to a fucking great show. True. Cause I think Danny DeVito adds so much to their oh, chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love about Always Sunny is if you look at like any of the outtakes and everything like that, is that you can tell that so much of this is just fucking improv. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, there are so many lines in Always Sunny that you're like, where, where the fuck did this come from? And you know that they just fucking made it up on the spot. Right? <laughs> it's so good though. It's so weird. I don't think I've actually sat down and watched like a full episode. Oh my God. Oh, but so I've seen funny. so many clips. Yeah. Well, Cause it's so fucking iconic yeah. and funny. Yeah. There's like, there's so many, like I, I thought about putting this, but it felt so wrong in a sense. Cause I'm like, I think this is my favorite, but there's so many American sitcoms that are in like occupy the same space in my mind, like right. Arrested mm -hmm. Development, not the new season. Mm -hmm. That is just really fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, what are some other, really good American sitcoms that are very adult humor that are really well written. Uh, Community um, is really good as well. Curb Your Enthusiasm? Curb Your Enthusiasm, Curb yeah. Your Enthusiasm is really good as well. Yeah. But I think Sunny is oh, always favorite. Always Sunny is it's like the, the best. best. It's the best. It's the best out of all of them for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just- <laughs> Gonna be sad when it ends. Gonna be really sad. I'm gonna sad. be really sad. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that it's gone on for this long, honestly. Well, they renewed it for like, what, two more seasons, I think at least? So yeah, how many seasons at least two is more. there? Yeah. Do I think we, they just did 11 or 10? Yeah. So, uh, I can't, I can't okay. remember. So, so many fucking yeah. good, memeable moments as yeah. well. Okay. You dumb bitch. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's just like, sometimes you have, you have a moment where you're watching these people do these awful things and you're just like, fuck, do I kind of relate to what one of the characters <laughs> is saying? Right? It's, it's, it's me like, that's the problem is it, it's meant to be characters that you're, that you're not remotely like, but exactly. a lot of the audience are like, I actually like this guy. Like, no, 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 you're not supposed to. You're, you're yeah. not supposed to like them. You're like, fuck, I actually I kind of, kind of, so I just kind of like them. And it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so awful that it's like, Fucking amazing! Mm. I don't know. Fucking, you have to watch it. Uh, I will. I will. Just, just, just watch. Always, you sunny. can watch any episodes out of context, mm. and I think yeah. you'll be all right. But I think like, that's the thing. It's like I've only seen clips out of context, and it's still funny. Yeah, it's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, because I, th I think all, the, all, I think all they do is just like, what would happen if we just put these four, five characters into a situation, and then, and then, and then they just like let the characters act yeah, out yeah. the situation. <laughs> kind of feels like an improv class in right. some ways, right? But right. because they work together so long, they kind of like know each other's beats mm. and everything like oh, that. Oh yeah. Mm. Like I do not know how they film some of this without fucking laughing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Two left. What are you Two going for? Two left. Let's do Chernobyl. I mean, I love this series. I, I thought about putting it on. Yeah, but I was like, oh, I don't know. Is it because it's too good? <laughs> it's like, too good. You know how, like you said, Breaking Bad is too polished. Like yeah. this is the most polished and clean TV show that is just unarguably amazing. I agree. Like, it's so I mean, when, it's I, just when I first saw this, and, and I and I haven't seen this, but when I first saw pictures of this, mm -hmm. I thought it was like a documentary series. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, well, he said, yeah. I, said that. I mean, it, I mean, it's not a documentary series, yeah. but obviously based on real events. Yeah, so you yeah, can yeah. actually believe that it's based on real events. You Dude, know? it is. It is very, yeah. very good. Yeah. It's it's one of those Don't stories. Don't spoil Chernobyl for you, but uh, oh yeah. shit, it's what a, happened? It's a bit of a nuclear bomb now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, when when they were writing Chernobyl in real life, bro, they 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 fucking knew what they were doing. They would make some great television, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I what I love about Chernobyl, obviously, it's based on real life, but it's one of those stories that happen in real life that is so fucking insane that mm. it it's you mm. kind of watch this and you're like, wow, this is an insane story. Oh wait, this actually fucking yeah. happened. reality yeah. is stranger than fiction. Yeah, you can't actually believe that some of the shit that happened in Chernobyl actually happened here. Mm. And yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just such a perfectly crafted TV show. I think the reason I've really liked Chernobyl uh, is because it's only like, it's a mini series. It's so, yeah. so short. Yeah, like right. how many episodes is it? Five, six, it's not much. Four or four, five. Yeah, it might even be oh, four. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, is, it is not much. You can watch it in a day or two, um, two evenings. It, it is just amazing. You will not regret okay. it. I think, yeah. and I don't know, I haven't met a single person yeah. who watched this TV show uh, and yeah. didn't sing its praises. Because like the thing, the thing I loved about it is that one th one thing that I normally don't like about, let's say, biopics or you know, shows about real life events mm. is that there's nothing there's nothing to keep me coming back because I already know the ending because it happened, right? Yeah, because well, it happened. But it's the journey. It's but yeah, the yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Like it's it is about the journey. You're right, but yeah. sometimes my brain, like my brain, is like I I, that, I, I I need something to keep me coming back every week. Yes, so like, but I, what I, think, I think with biopics, what's so like interesting and unique about them is that you can give a lot more context and a human yeah. sense to, to the events and the characters involved in a sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, totally I also agree. think that's the reason why a lot of biopics are just movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because yeah. it's just like one clean package because you you know what's gonna happen most yeah. of the time, right? But what what I, what like drew me into Chernobyl immediately and mm. kept me going to the end that made me appreciate the journey because the journey was amazing. But mm. the the one thing I think it did perfectly was it set up this mystery, right? Mm. So this power plant, spoilers, this power plant basically <laughs> explodes in Ukraine, right? Oh, fucking hell, God, yeah, it's yeah. Chernobyl for me. <laughs> It's only yeah. the most devastating yeah. nuclear disaster exactly. in human history. Yeah. And within like the first episode, they set up this concept of this 
is impossible. It is impossible for a nuclear explosion to happen on this scale. Yeah. It is so impossible that when it actually exploded, people didn't even believe that you know it was it happened. It was because of the nuclear reactor. Right, right, you know, right. That's 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 right. that's that that was part of like the incompetence of yeah. the uh, higher ups back then, where where they were sending people to check on the nuclear reactor to check on what caused this explosion, and people were like, "Oh, there's fucking bits of nuclear debris everywhere," and they were like, "I don't believe you. Go check right. yourself." And and so of course everyone who checked would would die yeah. because because they would be exposed to a lethal ra- a lethal do- dose of radiation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it sets off this mystery and that mystery like continues throughout the entire series. Yeah. And that's what kept me coming back was just mm. not only just to see what happened, but there was this mystery that I wanted to see how they mm. resolve this. Cause I genuinely didn't know. And I mm. genuinely wanted to know that's how true. something impossible I feel, could I feel happen. Chernobyl, the Chernobyl event is one of those things where everyone knows the name of it and everyone knows what happened, but very few people actually know how it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How or why? Yeah, it's, how or why, right? It's also really eerie, the series. Like mm. it, it's always really like, slow like kind yeah. of violin eerie music that creeps in right. yeah at no point is it even remotely happy it's like yeah. depressing all the way through yeah right. and like the cinematography as well in this is insane. fucking fantastic it is stunning yeah mm. um like watching this is just a treat all of the actors are amazing yeah um i think the only thing that it could do better is that it, it could be like Maybe it's like a bunch of British actors. Mm. So it could be like Russian to make it a little bit more believable. Uh, but I didn't really need it. Right, I felt right. like it was just great. Like, yeah. you know, it was good. It was just like, and I think I think Shinobu has made like by itself, made me just afraid of just the sound of a Geiger counter. There's yeah. Like the way they use oh, the, the Geiger, Geiger counter <laughs> sounds, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's yeah. it's literally like scarier than a horror movie. Yeah. Right, where they- it, like, that, that is a horror movie. Yeah, exactly. Where, <laughs> where there's, I think there's a scene where um, these guys are like, in like the sewer or something, trying to figure out where, how to get in this nuclear power plant. And from you, the bottom up. Yeah, from the bottom mm. up, right? And you see, you just hear the Geiger counter and all you hear is the Geiger counter. And then since they're wearing like full suits, you don't hear them say anything. You just hear the breathing mm. and the Geiger counter. And with those two elements alone, they're able to create such a fucking tense oh, and yeah. terrifying Very atmosphere. Mm. And it's just, it's just, fuck, it's Watch insane. It. Amazing television. Watch it. You will not yeah. regret it. Uh, and I guess finally, finally, Justice League. I get to talk about Justice League. Did not expect this on. I wasn't. No, oh, I, I was kind of expecting it, considering you are like a big MCU guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so well, I, I mean, it's not MCU though. It's not. It's right. not MCU. But like, but it's the same vibe, <laughs> right, right. you know, same vibe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this series is a banger. I will admit, this straight up is a banger. Yeah. You know, so, I, I don't think I ever watched this, dude. This shit, whenever it got came on TV, felt like a fucking treat. But it was never on. It was. Right. It was fucking amazing, and I, I and I agree. It was never on TV. But Unless every time, it, every time right. it did come on in the UK, I watched the shit out of this, right? Mm. And like, I, I like, I got a confession. I'm like not a massive fan of like the DC superheroes, you know? Mm, you know. Marvel guzzling. <laughs> I'm not even like a, I, I wasn't a fan of like yeah, the Marvel. Yeah, actually, no, I was. No, I was. Yeah, you are, you are. You are. All right, all right. All right. About? You know, I, I grew up with like the Spider-Man cartoon. Bro. I, I fight, go, I go on, go on. Tell, like, you literally tell us, eluded the tell last, season, why you... last couple of seasons of Game uh, of Thrones to the MCU earlier. Because like, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just, I just always thought like the DC um, characters were just kind of boring, you know? Superman was kind of just- a, Superman is boring. Superman's boring. Straight, straight up, Superman, straight Superman, up. Superman's, Superman's boring, boring. Just, Wonder Woman's boring. Superman's just a dude. Green Lantern is like who? Green Lantern's <laughs> okay. Green Lantern's who? Batman's obviously goated. Uh, Flash is okay. Like, okay. like, like, like okay. In most iteration of Batman, I was just like, this is this is kind of just boring. He's yeah. just like, he's just edgy, he's dark. He's, you he's know, good in this. That's, uh, that's that, why. Right, right. The reason I fucking love this Justice League is yeah. every character who I normally hate in their own individual media, every character in this is a fucking banger. Hell like yeah. they, they, they made Batman, like Batman by himself, I never found interesting. Batman, in a squad of superheroes where everyone's got fucking superpowers and yet Batman's the most badass out of all of this group. <laughs> Fuck yes. Okay, I bet I became a Batman simp because of the Justice League. Right. Uh, because of the Justice League cartoon. And also like, I, th- I think like Superman is a v- like a way more interesting character in here in most of uh, most of like the films I've mm. seen him portrayed because mm. he's just like, what I love about him here is that he feels like the father of the group. You know, he yeah. really cares about everyone deeply. <laughs> And like, he's, he's like, he's 
Batman's like the rogue, right, in this group, but he's still like really, really good friends with Batman as well. Yeah. And you can see a lot of a lot of the chemistry between the group really grow and develop as characters as from the series beginning to the series end. Because yeah. I, I remember I was like, I really liked the Justice League cartoon and I was like, was that a kid thing? Was that a kid thing? Was I'm, that a dumb, yeah, was, dumb was that a kid. dumb kid? And I remember what re-watching it like two three years ago so it was actually pretty recent mm. um re re-watching like a few seasons i'm like damn this is this is a genuinely good yeah, show good. <laughs> and i think it's like my favorite superhero cartoon show that i remember growing up i mean yeah it's uh, other than that they have yeah. one of the other ones like teen titans maybe. there's this teen titans everyone talks <laughs> yeah everyone talks about batman I didn't even like yeah, uh, everyone talks about batman okay, the batman is actually really okay batman's kind of good at that actually that's the cool. batman tv series yeah yeah the, the batman good. the animated tv mark series hamill mark hamill yeah i know it's, i know yeah. it's mark hamill but yeah um i i way prefer justice league just because i love it's valid yeah I, I i loved the group dynamic and it was one of those shows where you watch this and you see the modern iteration of Justice League and you're like, man, what fucking went wrong? You had a everything, you had the perfect template wrong. right there. Right there. Wow. Um yeah, the Flash. I'd never heard of the Flash before, and I fucking love that he was kind of like the wild, wacky kid in this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fucking every every, every character in, in Justice League is. I don't even remember the names of the other ones. I, well, I can't remember the other the birdish woman. I can't remember. Hawk the girl. Oh, uh, Hawk girl. I never liked Hawk girl. That doesn't sound like a real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, they, I, 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 they, they gave all, back then, because obviously like the fucking 19 fucking 50s, whenever they made these comics, yeah, they yeah, gave yeah. all the shit powers to the girls. Yeah. Is but Moon Knight one of them? No, that's Marvel. No, that's Marvel. That's Marvel. Right, okay. yeah, but actually one of my favorite arcs involved like Hawk Girl, which is where basically, I, I really, is it Hawk Girl or am I just like making shit up? <laughs> I really hope it it's is. It's a girl and she's a hawk. But it's when her species actually like invades earth, mm -hmm. right? Uh. That's one of my favorite movie arcs. Uh, so just as exact, where her, her entire species invades earth and basically just takes over and creates this dy dystopian society uh, that the Justice League have to overthrow. Oh, I, I, I gladly accept our bird overlords. <laughs> bird overlords. That sounds hot. The bird demic. Because <laughs> I, 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 I say bird girl and I'm just like, wait, isn't isn't that just like bird, bird girl? girl? <laughs> isn't that just like bird guy from a uh, fucking Rick and Morty? I really hope. <laughs> What's her name? It's Hawk Girl. It's Hawk Girl. Hawk okay. Girl. And that just sounds like a stupid name. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hawk Girl doesn't it's sound real. Man. Yeah. Batman, Hawk Girl. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, Batman sounds way cooler than Hawk Girl. I don't know why. It does. Maybe because, maybe because I, I got a picture of Batman in my head. Yeah. just being badass. Hawk Girl. Who's my fault? Maybe I'm the problem here. <laughs> doesn't sound real. Right. It does. Have you seen that edit where they take the Batman theme and then they edit out the bats in it? So no. it's just, man. <laughs> Man, I need it. Man, I need man. it. I need to hear that. It's such a, it's such a stupid edit, but I just, I, I don't know why it's just so. Fucking why is that? Fun. Why did that pop in your mind? Right? I don't know. I don't. It's the funniest thing I've heard all day. I mean, good taste there, uh, gone. I think overall, I'd yeah. Say. Well, I mean, I, aside I, from I, Game of Thrones, right? Except for your taking Game of Thrones, yeah. actually die ball. I mean, I, I already want to see like a few new you shows. Watch, you'll like Chernobyl. Yeah. yeah. I, I, no, I was always interested, and in, I, I really want to watch mm. it. Yeah. But like Good Place sounds good as well. Honestly, if I could recommend one show that's like a show that gels with me the most on mm. this one, it'd probably be Good Place. Like, okay. yeah, Chernobyl, yeah, Chernobyl, Chernobyl, I think is the best show out of this. But depressing. Technically, <laughs> The Good Place, I just like, it was such a surprise to me. I didn't, nice. ex I didn't expect it to be that good. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. That well, meant. there it is. Our TV taste, our trash taste. In Can TV, you tell that say. we're normal TV viewers? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you I'm got not. some recommendations, <laughs> fantastic. Let us know. You know, maybe tell us in like a tweet at us or go to the subreddit and let us know that you watch the TV it. shows. They'll do it. They'll do it anyway. And you liked it. Because I'd like to know if my recommendation or one of these boys' recommendation was helpful to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, but hey, look at all these patrons though. They <gasps> watch TV <gasps> and they have good taste in TV, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. But uh, hey, if you'd like to support the show, then go to our yes. Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Follow us on Twitter, send us your memes or your three by threes on the subreddit. Yeah. And if you hate a face, listen to us on Spotify. Yeah. And if you, you and if and if anyone says that I only like Game of Thrones season seven because there's incest in it, get the fuck out. <laughs> there's incest in all of it. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You, that's, that's what I'm theories, saying. That's, that's what I'm saying, on the okay? Because <laughs> he likes incest. This, 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 is the, is, this is the aura emo. You watched episode three, one where he's getting banged in the tower and he's like, wait, is that a brother or a sister? <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh God. All right. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.